All right. It is episode, what episode number is this? 596? 14. 596? <laughs> we don't know. Um, we're here in studio. We're getting ready to do, we're going to do this part of it as an Instagram live as we get going, and we're kind of like rushed for time, so we're all rushing through it. But uh, Kurt Geyer speaking, got him thrown off. I didn't play the intro or nothing. We didn't get like ready. We just dove in. Jumping in. Eric Hammond. Doug Schmidt. We have Ross Biggers back. Hey, what's going on, guys? Ross, people like forgot about you almost. Yeah, it's all right. (laughs) You're back. We missed you. (laughs) Here I am. Co-hosting yet again, Mr. Todd Anderson. How's it going? Good to see you. Yes. Um, Vital part in the Mountain Ops podcast. Uh, It was fun. That was a good one. It was fun. And returning guest oh boy. for the season, Mr. Gary Blessing. What's up, man? Good to be back, brother. I'm going to pull that mic up to you so we can be set up. Yeah, get, there you go. Perfect. Gotcha. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Not always good to see you, but good to see <laughs> yeah, you. Right? <laughs> right. Uh, Gary is, a, I think, one of the best dog trackers in the game. Probably the most, I'd, I'd say you're like the name. I'd say like you and Tracker John are like the names, right? right yeah, now. I mean, there's, there's, you know, popular trackers all over. I mean, I don't. You're our guy. Thanks. Okay. We'll say you're our guy. <laughs> to us, you're the most popular. Yeah. I'm a humble, humble guy, so I'm not going to. So I think here's what we do, because we're going to do the Instagram Live where we're going to really get into the meat and taters with you. And some of it might be repetitive talk from the first time, maybe not, maybe some different angles. But um, I say let's catch a season update from everybody, because it kind of ties in. To, unfortunately, it kind of ties in to some of the things we're going to talk about on this episode. Um Doug, I got a doe down. We're buck hunting. We're buck hunting. Good shot. Good recovery. Everything oh, went perfect smooth. shot. Actually, um, out of my first saddle, I didn't really. Technically, I was staying on the platform when I shot it, but I had to go with my tippy toes. Oh, you're getting. I just out. got a little western, you know. You're doing the offside shot, huh? Yeah. It was my only. <laughs> it's my only opening, and I had to take it at twenty yards, but it just worked out perfect, and she made it three feet out of the field. So good shooting. Congrats. Raptor nice. trick smoked her. Eric, where oh, you at, yeah. brother? I seen a, I seen a good one last night. He was a uh, a great one, a great one. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing about Mach great ten buffalo. when he went by, but great buffalo. Yeah, he he was bedded. I, there? I super snuck in, and he was bedded about eighty yards the whole time, and then all of a sudden here he comes. Looked like someone went in there and slapped him on the ass when he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he just popped up and started running. I don't know what happened, but well, he's in there. Hopefully, he's not he's a, gone. He's a good one. Okay. That's exciting. One. Yeah, no other exciting. updates right now? Uh, nope. Ross, how's your season been? Oh, pretty good. I just uh, <laughs> I got some arrows built and got my bow sighted in last night. So No, the hunting. Should be good. Uh, I, I'm thinking about hunting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Getting close. Is that going good? <laughs> Getting close. Thinking about it, it's going good? Uh, uh, which is actually pretty good because normally I don't start hunting until late. January? So, yeah, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm getting close. Todd? Well, I wish I had hey, better buddy. news to, to share, you know, kind of yeah. in the same boat as you. But no, last, uh, so October 15th, I think it was a Sunday morning. And, you know, we had that cold front come through and it just felt right. So kind of wanted to roll the dice and kind of go into one of my better areas. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually set a stand up for one specific deer and um, it's a bedding area for a lot of does and, and he'll work through there a lot. And he, he was not on the farm all summer, showed up that first week of October. So I knew he was in the area Mm -hmm. thought, you know, trying to play a little strategy of I'll go in and then burn one hunt, give them two weeks to reset and then go back in last week of October and got in there. And wouldn't you know it, he came through. Um, I was watching another deer a little bit further down the Ridge turned around and he was right behind me and kind of had to rush the shot guessed a little bit. Um, he was a little bit closer than I thought, and you know, I, I shot for thirty, and I think he was about twenty six, twenty seven, mm-hmm. and high shoulder hit, um, <clears throat> about four inches of penetration. He ran off, and most likely, he's still out there, you know, with a broad head in his shoulder, but not what anybody wants. No, it's a bummer. Um, I was kind of like trying to make you feel better about that situation, so right. I'll catch up in my season. I uh, hunted. I don't know what week week ago maybe not quite a week ago saw one of my top bucks um sitting there in a spot that's like a transition area between timber and like what would be open grassy like locusty cedary area and i'm sitting there and i'm just like god it feels good i was hunting a, a what we call a whiskey wind here on the podcast which means like you know if a deer needs a northwest wind i'm hunting a north wind so the wind still works for them but if it was just a little off it'd screw you but it, 
those are the times when you see the big boys close. Oh, yeah. And I'm sitting there and I hear <sighs> like and it just rained. So everything was none the, everything was soft, you know? And I look down and there's this big, fat, heavy uh just kind of a turd rack on him, but you can tell it's an older deer and he's underneath my tree <sighs> panting. And I'm like, oh shit, well, I'm gonna get my bow just in case. And I see movement behind him and I look and one of the bucks I'm hunting, one of the two top bucks I'm hunting is right there behind him. And I'm like, I'm caught. Like he's they're just they were under me instantly. So I'm like, oh shit. Well, this buck was at the base of my tree under me, and he I think he smelled where I touched the tree. Right. And he spun and the buck I wanted to shoot saw him spin. I think he was pushing him. The way that fir- first buck was like panting, it's like this buck behind him was just like dogging him. Trying to get him out of there or something. Because when the, the big old kind of like turd buck took off, he, the buck I wanted to shoot, I heard him go <laughs> and snort wheeze at him and took off. So I immediately am like, well, he snort wheeze, a lot happened, so I, and they never came back. But Right. Um, so at least some of my thoughts of where he – might be was correct mm-hmm. um then two nights ago um uh, sitting there there's a buck i call fat boy just a heavy old eight pointer double throat patch beautiful buck um, i see him come out hit my mock scrape and i'm like all right here we are you know coming in the last hour of daylight go time cruises through he comes to 30 yards and i'm like all right he's gonna step there's a trail at 33 yards i know it i see does walk it i range it i mentally practice it i'm like all right he's gonna walk that I draw. Right when I draw, instead of walking three steps forward and let me shoot him, he quarters straight hard to me, comes in. So I let down. And, you know, I'm shooting that, um, I'm shooting the era, faster bow, 70 pounds. I let down fast and pretty hard because I wanted to, like, oh, shit, it's, I got to adjust. Right. So I'm like, okay, 25. All right, he's coming all the way in. So he comes in at 20 yards broadside. I draw. I draw fast because it's like, I'm now I'm already like shit a little bit with the first draw yeah. let down. And when I drew, I drew, I must have drawn harder than I thought and the adrenaline, the excitement, my arrow comes unknocked. And my arrow, I have my bino harness open because I was watching him through the trees and my knot goes bing, 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 bing on my binos. And I'm like, oh, fuck. There I am at full draw. Arrow is unknocked. Like, probably still half ass in your rest. No, it, it came out because it like pointed up, the broadhead's up. And I'm like, fuck. So, and this deer is 18 yards. Just perfect. So I let down, oh. and I ha- luckily had a tree there. So I like re knock, you know, all in Instead a hurry. Fucking around. And then I get a quarter and away shot at 21 yards. And I drew back, hit him with the. I shoot and I hit him, and he spins around and goes to my food plot and stops. And I'm trying to look, and then he runs off, and I can see the light of knock bouncing through the trees. And I'm like, I don't know what happened. So I download like the Tacticam stabilizer footage, and I'm yep. like, Oh, I hit him right behind the last rib, kind of how I was aiming, quartering away, blah, blah, blah. Gave him six hours. Lee and I went and looked. A little bit of blood. Uh, didn't go into like the thick of the of the property. Backed out, and I'm like stressing. Don't All know. night long. But then I, looking at the footage, I'm like, I just I, I stuck a two-inch torch with a 500-grain arrow, 70 pounds at 21 yards behind the last rib. That deer is fucking dead. He like yeah. nothing can take thought. a two inch head through the cavity, and I'm like, I must have hit offside the way the arrow kind of like boom, cranked down. Right. So I, uh, this is late, you know, it's one or two in the morning. I get home and I, I'm like, I'm gonna text Gary. At three in the morning, we're texting, <laughs> and Gary goes, I'll be there in the morning. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> get some sleep, like yeah. you're gonna sleep. <laughs> yeah, I didn't sleep. You know, I think I slept. You gotta tell everyone that though, right? Go ahead, do. <laughs> I didn't expect him to respond. I was like, well, if he sees it, go in the to morning, bed. You know, <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> so it's like I'll be there about eight, eight thirty, whatever. I'm like, cool. We get there, track, kind of, you know, we talked about it. Well, and we'll get into detail in the episode of this. Like, yep. Diesel was acting like, yo, bro, not convinced, and and we kind of talked about that. Like, so I, I think he at first we're like, all right, this is good, and then it's like Diesel hit a wall, and he was just like unconvinced, and. Long story short, um, got familiar with a river. We tracked, you know, we speculated, we talked, and we. I ended up getting a picture of that deer at one in the morning on a non cellular cam. And so he was still on his feet at one o'clock in the morning. Yep. And uh, yep. so I'm like, okay. So 
say my farewells with Gary a couple of days ago. I'm like, all right, buddy, want to do the podcast? Cool. We'll do an Instagram live. And that, literally that's how fast this happened. Yep. Like yep. we kind of, that's how we plan our podcast this time. I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. You're fine. But, you're, t- you're telling a story. Yeah, so, um, I gotta get, <sighs> let, it <out. laughs> let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out, Kurt. You're okay. Okay. It's a therapy session. Take, hey, me. take a deep breath. Yeah. I feel like of the biggest fucking shit bag, the last two episodes in a row, I'm talking about me wounding shit. And I've been on a, well, we talked about a six year tirade. And, and so it just sucks, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm in a dark place, but any of us would be in your same, yeah, for sure, same boots right now if we were, if that was us. <laughs> it's an ebb and flow of bow hunting, right? But yep. so I get back, um, Sam Ubel calls me. I can never say his last name right. And I'm like, hey, man, uh, we talked for like an hour. And it's like, hey, man, uh, yeah, I, if I see him off, it's because I'm, dragon i'm licking my wounds i sent him the footage and sam's a video guy so sam kind of like lightens it up and slows it down and zooms and he's like dude he goes i think what you're seeing when you thought you went in behind that last rib is the angle arrow with the lighted knock is making your brain perceive that the arrow is like straight where it went but what happened i hit like todd on side scapula kicked sh- shoulder and it was a steep angle you know i'm in a 20 foot Novik's right. ladder on a hill, so I was probably like 28 feet at 20 yards, so steep angle. And I think with that angle, it just took me right into that scapula. And uh, the video gave us the perception that I was with the, the angle of the knock that I was quartered in behind that last rib and hit offside because I sent it to the committee, the team WCB, it's like 30 people, and everyone's like, dude, offside, that deer's in there dead. And we even really thought yep. that too, Gary, looking For sure. at the video. And, we all uh, we all said that. Yeah, yeah. like I, I talked to find the, him right away. Yeah, I talked to all you guys. You guys like, yeah, he's in there stiff. Austin, I talked to him. He's like, why aren't you in there getting him? That you're dead. I'm like I feel that way, but we're be safe and sorry. We were wrong. So <sighs> yeah, we were wrong. <laughs> Dang it. So it my happens. Hope, yeah, it happens, bro. It does. It sucks. It. Do, I feel. Uh, I've been mentally in a dark place a lot since it happened. I've been, uh, but I got to <laughs> get back on the pony. <laughs> I think I called you last time. I'm like, what are you doing? And, you go, and then you're like. I'm sitting on the couch feeding my fat face with two pieces of Casey's pizza. I did. <laughs> and a I, monster. I got Casey's pizza. I drank a monster. I went, dude, I relapsed. I relapsed. <laughs> I relapsed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you don't want to oh, make no. And that'll make it relapse, though, so, yeah. for sure. You don't want to make light of it, though, right? I mean, obviously, you bow hunting means something to you. Yeah. Right? It's not something that's just a casual part of your life. And, and mm-hmm. you work all year to get to that point where it's like, okay, now's the time where we got to do what we do. Yep. And you get so many limited opportunities. Right. And so when one comes through and yeah. you don't make the most of it, it's so depressing. I know. It totally the, tears me out. There's all the thought there. of wounding a whitetail that hundred percent, it's the worst, you know, it's a horrible feeling. Yep. I, um, uh, I'm very stuck. I'm going to give that area a break, obviously. Mm-hmm. And um, I do think that deer lives there. I, my thoughts on the track were like, I'm like, I think he'd be, this is where he might have gone. And I, I think we we're, I was close to being accurate. What we, in the long story, we could fill the whole episode with yep. about me and I don't want it to be. But um, <laughs> I think give him a little time. I think the deer's going to be back in there. It's such a secure place to be that I don't see him not going back to it. Um, but may, And maybe this traumatized him enough where he's like, I ain't ever going back. That could be, but <laughs> I, mean, I think I that he will be, you know. Um, More than likely. And if that's the case, um, I think I can get on him again. It's just yeah. how and when and how long is it going to take. And I'm going to be as proficient as a bow hunter can be, and I know Todd will do the same on his deer, to uh, get another arrow in, in him, especially like given the opportunity. So, But you still got to dream about that. When that deer comes back, say you're in the stand and then he's he comes rolling back through. I mean, that's he's not a mega giant, so, he's a mature eight. But either either way, I mean, it was so cool if you could just get an yeah. arrow on that deer and having a second chance. If know. I get a second chance, I'm sorry, guys, I'm full mountain. I'm and we're gonna put him behind. The <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right, hey. all right, we're full mountain. I'm huh? <laughs> okay, hey, you are in a dark place. <laughs> yeah. I'm really Gone going off through your, <laughs> I relapsed, dude. Gone off your rocker, bro. <laughs> yeah, so that's where that's where I am. So, unfortunate situation, but I think the deer is gonna be fine. To uh, I mean, I like shooting deer, and maybe I'll get to shoot this one twice. There you go. Yeah, that's right. And that's obviously not a serious thing I want to say. It's a joke, <laughs> but. But uh, it sucks. Yep. And I think I think the the biggest thing for you and Todd is just getting the deer on camera again. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. that's the yep. biggest win. So mm-hmm. I've stayed off you know. my farm all week, and it's like I'm really anxious to get out there this weekend and uh, pull some cards and see because e- even after you know the whole tracking 
episode that I had, which wasn't as entailed as you guys, just because I knew what happened. Um, went in and put a couple more cameras in just, just to see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing is too, they're about, sorry to interrupt you there, but the thing is too, they're about to hit some serious adrenaline coming into rut. So even though he might, they might be hurt, they're, they're going to get, they're going to pull pull it together. The positive of it is it's relatively early and the best is yet to come of the season. And there's chances that they're going to want to breed. It sucks. Anybody who says that that's never happened to them is either a rarity of a bow hunter or they haven't been doing it long enough. Flat out, I will fight you over that. I, yeah. I really will stand by it. That we've all that been strong. There. Yeah, yeah. If, has everybody in here shouldered a deer in their bow hunting career? Mine. Definitely. Everybody has. Yeah. Have you, Jordan? Shut up. Get out. Yeah, leave. You're <laughs> out. See you. You're fired. But you only. Hey, you haven't been bow hunting that long. <laughs> yeah. So. Dude, I just watched a video last week of Winky on uh, YouTube talking about like a 220 deer early in his hunting career on his farm down in Iowa that same thing. He lost, he lost it. And yeah. neighbors ended up, you know, finding it that spring or whatever. And so he had some pictures of it, but it's, but it, you hate to say it, but it's kind of part of bow hunting. Yeah. Shoulders it, it are really never is. good. It's not ideal. Shoulders are never good. No. But there is the case of y- y- your worst fear is he's going to get sick and die. Mm-hmm. The best case is he lives on to see another year. And I've seen both a lot of them live i've had yeah. deer that i've shot in the shoulder found dead in mushroom season i've also had deer harvested the next year even bigger and they dig my broadhead right out of the shoulder mm-hmm. so it, it can go either way you just you never know but I'll that's, tell you that's this. the thing that keeps you up at night though i mean it is. you're mad at your shot you're, you're pissed at the whole situation then all of a sudden uh, it can go either way yeah. so i'm gonna do my damnedest to make sure i can kill that deer I'll tell you that. That's right. So that's all you can do. That's all you can do. All right. Enough about our season and update and somber. Hopefully you're having a better season than us <laughs> than me. Son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> we should probably crank up our Instagram live. Let's do it. And we're, I think we're going to have Jordan run the phone. I don't know. You might have to just sit. I don't know how we're going to do this. I kind of made the graphic and got Rammy at the post. I was like, we'll figure it out. Um, even if you got to sit at the end of the table there, Jordan. The, what, people are going to call in? Well, that would be a bad idea. No, we're going to oh. run it. <laughs> so what the hell are we running here? So I'm going to... Hold on. Before we get that going... Just a dough. <laughs> Wait. Oh, wouldn't that back. be cool? That would be fucking cool, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to... You still have some daylight left, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, Kurt. Right down the road. Yeah, no kidding. We're going to go... Do not disturb... And I'm going to crank up Instagram Live. So for people who aren't on the internet, we planned an Instagram Live for this. How, what, what's your uh, your battery life on your phone, Eric? Do you want to do Facebook Live as well? I can, yeah. Oh, I'm that on, might kill I'm Jordan. I'm on uh, 91% now, boy. Wow, I am on 79. Jordan, can you can you work two phones at the same time? Sure. How you feeling? I'm good. Okay. He's all good. Can I check my trail cameras quick? You can do whatever you want. Okay, uh, going we're home. gonna go live here. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, what's up, guys? We're on Instagram Live. I'm gonna flip this around. Jordan, you wanna come get my phone? And feel free to like chime in when there's questions and whatever. All right, what do I gotta do? Let me see your phone. Do you need Facebook? I yeah. We, or no? What do now oh, here? We can do Facebook. Sorry for everybody listening in audio land. Where's your Facebook app? Right on the right in that little box. Or on the left, I guess. Pull it up. Oh. Pull it up. The main screen, bro. Boop. Oh, sorry, buddy. Boop. Let me switch over I'll here. See if I can uh I'll see if I can pull up our Facebook. There we go. We are on the right page. Okay. Mm, How the get. hell do you do this? Well, that's a good picture. Ooh, P. Vitty, huh? P. Vitty. Nice buck. Yeah. Live. What's that on his forehead? Or is that just the picture? Looks like it's... Stocking cap. Oh, oh it's like deer? the sun. Yeah. No, it's on the deer's cap. forehead. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the deer's forehead. It looks, looks like it's... It's like there's some exposed meat there or something. I think it's the sun. Yeah, it's the sun. Yeah. Cool pick. Yep. Live with Gary. They're excited to see you. Who's that? Everybody. No kidding. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. 
I'm going to put live with Gary Blessing, dog tracking for deer. Don't quit your day job, bro. Shut up. <laughs> Better saying. than you. Okay. Okay, go live. Okay. All right. We're doing it the, the getaway. Okay, how do we spin this? Boom, there we go. Okay. Here you go, Jordan. Jordan. You got to run, too. Got your work cut out for you. There's Jordan, our intern. No, I've never seen a picture of him. All right, so I wonder if we can watch the live on our Facebook here. Look at that. Oh, there it is. My face. <laughs> your face. Sweet. Okay, so we can kind of monitor the Facebook. I wonder if we can do the Instagram, too. Let's try. I could pull up my Instagram and watch. The Instagrams? I wonder if we can watch our own live. Instagram is so weird. On, on All right, there we go. Sure enough. We got both. There so it is. Howdy, boys. We'll bounce back what and up? forth. All right. We are here, uh, episode 596, with uh, Gary Blessing, Mr. Dog Tracker Diesel. The deer tracker. Yep, Diesel the deer tracking dog. We need to get Diesel in here and get him on a mic. We do. <laughs> Sitting right there. That'd be nice. He wouldn't have much to say. He'd just be chilling. Oh. First of all, he's my favorite dog on the planet, I think. Thanks. He's just awesome. He's cool. He's cool. He's a hard worker, isn't he? He busts his tail, literally. He gets after it. Yeah, I love that dog, man. It's like, the, I just love like saying bye to him yesterday, which if you'll listen to the beginning part, you'll have to just, just see why I had to hang out with Diesel. It's always good <laughs> and bad to see Diesel. Yep. Uh, for me... <laughs> I'm bad luck, but uh, but anyway, well, it's good to have you back in studio. Thanks, brother. Good to be here. I would say the last time you were in, it was one of the most clip worthy, uh, maybe most popular episode we've yeah. had when it comes to like people's opinions and shares and comments That's and stuff awesome. on TikTok and Instagram reels and stuff like that. That's awesome. Um, I think anytime we're talking tracking deer with dogs or drones. People are interested, yep. yep. And everyone has an opinion. It seems like, and you get to hear it all. Oh yeah. Yep. So I don't know where to start with this. We covered, I felt like about everything last time, and that's why we talked to be fun to go. And maybe there's a lot we didn't cover. Oh, yeah. You want to get to? <laughs> um, I thought it'd be cool to get on live so people could ask you questions sure. or ask us questions. And we can kind of chip through it and uh, sure, that'd go be from fun. there. So Jordan's running the live, and he's holding two phones together. So he's going to have to work on his pan and all that stuff as we get going. So I'm going to get tired. My over my camera needs to be cleaned off. It's really uh, yeah. Okay, Instagram is definitely where it's at. Obviously, because we promoted here. So um, what's new since last time, dude? We I mean, it's been a little over a year, probably, or maybe not quite. I don't I don't, don't even remember. That's where I'm at. Yeah, not a whole lot. I mean. You know, had a busy off season trying to keep Diesel busy and yeah, keep him exercised and in shape and ready for this season. It's, you know, and I'm a judge for the United Blood Trackers too. So this summer was full of tracking events and judging and, you know, helping other people with their dogs and stuff and taking care of mine and trying to keep up with the businesses. So it's a, it's a busy off season for me, but yeah, now it's a good time of year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm driving here and all the colors are changing and it's 50 degrees and spitting rain. It's like it's deer hunting. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's time. We're here. Weather. This so is it. What is your schedule like this time of year? When you get going, it's like, are you, I just imagine, I texted the other day at three in the morning and yep. you answered. I'm like, oh, he's up. Yep. And you were up. Do you, do you sleep? Yeah, I sleep, but, you know, I generally don't sleep a lot anyway, but as you know, when, when things start heating up in the woods, my life gets nuts. Heck, mm -hmm. Hectic, I bet. Pretty much every tracker that takes a lot of tracks or can takes a lot of track tracks, you're just a, you're a slave to the phone and you're a slave to your vehicle and hunters and dogs and trying to get something to eat and sleeping in the Casey's parking lot. And I mean, that's, <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. You, know, you need it, a mountain up sponsor. I'd love it. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> you need an Ignite sponsor. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's November is especially nuts. Th this time of year is manageable. We started off real slow. I had a track on uh, October 1st. It was real hot. And then I didn't track again until the 7th. And I thought, what in the hell's going on? And then every day it's been track, 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 track. Since then, mm -hmm. I think I've got, I don't know, 29 or 30 tracks in right now. She was, and it's what the nineteenth. Yeah, and by the time our fun. first shotgun hits, I'll have ninety. Damn, man! Uh, how, how many will you max out in a day, or does it depend on the track? I don't. I don't like to schedule more than three. You know, like on your track, <clears throat> we spent a lot of time there, but 
you know, if that's my first track of the day, I've got five and a half miles on my feet and I've spent four hours and I don't have a deer and I've got two other hunters waiting. And if I've got Todd waiting an hour and a half away, you just got to be patient, buddy. I'm sorry. And then the third guy might get there at nine o'clock at night. And it's just, right. that's just the way that it is. Yeah. And, and I don't want to shortchange you. Yeah. Just cause you got to get to the next guy. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, I can, it's a hard know, decision. In November, you can stack up the tracks, but it's you're not. telling me you're not in this to make money. No, <laughs> I'm not, man. <laughs> this is just, it's a passion. Yeah. And I just absolutely love following a dog and recovering deer and, you know, you just you know your track last year and and, and um, your track Kurt. It's not always about recovering deer either. Sometimes it's like, hey, this deer isn't dead, and and at least it's some comfort to you knowing he's just he's not dead somewhere that you just can't find him. And I feel like you know that's you know I I think some people who've never been I don't I don't want to word I want to word this right. Some people who've never tracked a deer with a dog. Like you can actually, they might shortchange it for what it is, but I think you can learn a lot. Yeah. Like you, you kind of can elevate every blood trail you can go on helps you bank something for your next one as a person for experience. But I feel like with a dog, you kind of like get elevated to another level of what you can learn. So it's like finding blood that is a mile from your last blood and what that looked like and where it was and why. Mm-hmm. You know, that can add a lot to your just yeah. personal experience and maybe what to look for, and what not to look for when you got blood and then it just stops and then you have to consider calling a dog or whatever it may be. Yeah. So, and it's not just me, but you know, there's a lot of trackers out there that are going to take a hundred, 150 tracks a year. We see a lot of stuff that you guys don't get to see because you only track 50 deer in your life, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You right. know, we, we do that in a month. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, it, it, the learning curve is, is really, you know, different mm-hmm. and, you know, and I try to educate the best I can along the way and help people. And, you know, that's, that's part of what we do, but yeah, you're definitely with a dog. You're going to see a lot. Yeah. You pick up on a lot. I um, never had to use a dog, but and I hope I never have to, but I yeah. still want to see a dog work it sometimes. And it's a, quite the experience, man. It really Todd is. on your daughter's deer. Yeah. Um, the one that we found when I called her up. I haven't seen the deer, but right. this is one of those things where you, you learn a lot by following the dog is, you know, what we call that little J hook when, when they're, when they're going and going and going and all of a sudden they start that little hook or either left to the right and almost looks like a fish hook. I believe my wife even called it out to you. I said, he's hooking. Well, yeah. Cause you know, it was early season, uh, youth season last year and, mm-hmm. and uh, my daughter Georgia was shooting a crossbow and she hit the deer back. We did not even look for blood. Like, I knew that was a gut shot deer. Instantly called Gary, and yep. I was like, hey, gut shot a deer in the afternoon. Are you available to come down tomorrow? He's like, yeah, we'll be there in the morning. Yep. And, I mean, it took longer to get from the truck to the shot site than it did to find the deer. <laughs> yep. Yep. It was that quick. It was amazing. Yeah, it was eight, so, nine minutes, something like that. Yeah. So when you say you see that J-hook, that's usually when they – You see that J-hook. the deer and- – yeah, giving up, like falling down. No, it, really, what they're doing, what we think anyway, it makes common, it makes sense, is they're hooking to watch their back trail. Oh. They're going to put their face into the wind, so they use the wind, and then they watch their back trail. So if they see somebody coming down where they've already been, they can go out the back door. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. yep. So, so we see that hook a lot. That's really interesting. And that's where they bed down and like. Yep. Dive that's in. when they're done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's when they know they're that's, done. Yep. Ah, that's cool. That's really smart. Yeah. yeah, it's like one of those things you might not realize. But what's cool, and you do the track, and I've been on a few with you, like you are like basically recording your track. So like you literally have the – there it is. There's the hook. Do yep. you keep that data? Oh, yeah. You do? I keep them all. That's awesome. Yep. And you need to put out a book one day, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many people would be interested. But I bet you everybody cool. on here right now would yeah. be interested. But just imagine, you know. just imagine the guys that have been doing it for 20, 30, and 40 years, what they can tell you. Right. It's – it's, it's mind blowing what they've seen, and even those guys learn something new every year. Mm-hmm. How it's, many tracks? Do you know how many tracks you've been on, like total? Mm. Hey Jordan, you want to center up with a table, maybe Over or five hundred and camera five hundred. And Diesel's your first dog, right? Oh, you yeah. are, yeah. Maybe so he's, he's back like everyone. against the wall there. Yeah. And we're at I don't know two hundred and eleven <laughs> or two hundred and twelve recoveries now. No kidding, it's yeah. insane. So I got a question. How old is Diesel? Diesel's five and a half. Okay, so it's his sixth season. Um, he was six months old his first season. He's, he found 12 deer his first season. It was pretty oh, good. Wow. That's but he's awesome. been, he's been on a rip the last 
couple of years. He's, he's in really coming into his own. Who gets he, tired first? You or Diesel? Me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You, you can't kill Kurt, dog. Kurt knows. Dude, I, you're a hustler, man. I mean, yeah. I don't know how old you are, but... I'm 52. You're in shape, brother. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Hey, let's go a couple Instagram stuff here. Let's at least acknowledge it since we promoted it. Uh, Grindstone Adventure says, what's up, boys? Uh, Moose Tracks Deer Recovery said, what's up, Gary? What's up, brother? Um, what kind of dog is Diesel? I'm awake. He's a Bavarian Mountain Hound. They Bavarian are a pure tracking breed from Europe. I love his look. Yeah, everybody says that. He's, he's just, not an ugly dog. He's a handsome dog. He's not an ugly dog. <laughs> and that's, that's the breed standard. They all look like that. Oh, it is? Yeah. So how, how does that type of dog do... Say I bought that dog. I'm like, I want a good pet. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I don't want to blood. I don't want to do any you, tracking with them. You're, you're in for a lot. A lot of energy. You might as well buy a Malinois and have it in your house and not do anything with it. It's going <laughs> to go nuts. Like we brought it up last time. It's not a basset hound. Yeah, just no. like, just like my blue healer. Yeah, they got to work. They're they working dogs. Work, yeah, they're energy bombs. And I spend all summer. You know, Diesel gets a mile and a half walk every morning, and he gets tug in the afternoon, and then there's a big ball or chase session in the at the evening, and it's it's constant. It's day after day. All so, right, Gary, you ready for this next one? Yep. Yeah, shoot. Okay. Uh, Kansas Pride Outfitter, you guys should have a, a good platform. I think you should touch base with the Drone Deer Recovery, which we've already had Mike and Drone Deer Recovery on the podcast. So go check that out. Um, I don't think it should be illegal, but maybe some of it should push for specialty permits or license. I figured drones were going to get brought up in this podcast mm -hmm. with you regardless. Um, but that's the first time through the live that it's got brought up. And we can go into it, but I don't want it to consume the entire podcast, right? And I have some ideas for some podcasts that we talked about sure. earlier, and mm -hmm. maybe it'll lead to that, and, and maybe not. But uh, yeah, so we, I think you touched base at Drone Deer Recovery. We've had them on. Mike was on. Um, I don't think it should be illegal, but maybe some of it should push for specialty permits, right? Do you think it should be illegal? What's your thoughts on the whole drone thing? I don't. I don't. I don't have a thought either way. I mean, that's up to the state and the DNR what they want to do. I. I you know, if if it's a decent way to find a deer, I'm I'm all for it. I'm not. I don't necessarily think that drones should be illegal if they're used correctly. Yeah, there. I think there's a big propensity for them to be used incorrectly or not in a way that the state Fears. really wants them to be used. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. You could very easily <clears throat> hunt or push deer with a drone. You know, and I think that's what they don't want to do. Um, it's but, like the fine line of, all right, this might be a stretch in comparison, but hear me <laughs> out here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, yeah. oh, oh fuck. It be, chills. Okay. <laughs> and we're on live and be a little more tame. All right. If, if I want to say some questionable shit, I normally let people listen to it later, not like live. <laughs> you know? um, it'd be like how Pope and Young kind of held on to the lighted knock yeah. thing for the record book is because their concern was like, technology into bow hunting and their thought is like there's a there's a fine line there's there. a battery or something in it you know or whatever but like i get the there needs to be some resistance with technology and hunting all the time whether we agree with it or not uh, the resistance is i believe a positive thing when it comes to technology and hunting right yeah right maybe but i i i don't think that back me up I don't anybody think like any state should like dive in head feet and just say oh yeah everything you know yeah have at it because it's just, by the way i don't think drones should be illegal either i don't, I don't i'm not like against them and i think i told you when we were eating dinner i you know I, I think i would have one in my truck to use as a tool but like i said i you know the hundred percent the dog is going to be out of the truck first but that's just my opinion. I, I, I don't have a, an opinion either way. I mean, again, leave it up to the state, but you know, I know it's a big controversy. It's there's a yeah. lot of heated discussion on on both sides. Wrong opinions. Right. Yeah. Uh, I got there's a funny comment. Nixon outdoors stopping at the gas station to grab a bush light so I can be drinking with y'all as I drive back to Michigan. <laughs> okay, sorry, I put you on blast, Cheers brother. To him. Yeah, hopefully there's no cops in here. <laughs> Just one beer. You're not a cop, are you, Gary? <laughs> no. Uh, Michigan caps. Okay, this is Rachel Kroom for, oh, for Gary. This ought uh, to be a good one. Other than a B B M H, uh, what's that? Bavarian Mountain Hound. Okay, what's your favorite <laughs> tracking breed? It better have short legs. <laughs> uh, well, she tracks with a uh, a tackle or a wire hair dachshund, and I think uh, and Rachel's probably gonna um, correct me, but I think it's like 
15 pounds. I mean, it's, it's just, oh, a really? little, yeah, it's a little one. I mean, you know, it's tiny. It's probably bigger than that, but <laughs> you know, I, I used uh, her dog's harness in a demonstration at a tracking event once and it, it's, it's like this big. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, I'm really impressed with wire hair dachshunds. They, they're gritty little dogs. Mm-hmm. They're easy to handle. They're not going to pull like a freight train most of the time like diesel does. Yeah. And they're um, crazy fuckers, the, the little things. Oh yeah. They, you know, well, I think I said on the last podcast, they're badger killers. Oh you know, yeah. They will, they will go in hole and come out with a badger. I mean, and it, it's, it's a small <laughs> dog, but they're, they're very accurate dogs. They're very, you know, low to the ground. They don't move yeah. real fast. Like diesel, he's very athletic. Um, so every, well, I shouldn't say every, I mean, there's a lot of badass tackles running around. Yeah. Um, See, it's funny because a guy who doesn't know dogs like me and probably everybody in here, like I wouldn't know what that dog was unless you, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't either. but yeah. if I was like, Hey man, shout out to you. I need to try. I didn't know shit about tracking and that dog came out i'd be like Pfft. what the fuck is this <laughs> no. i know i know some blonde chick with a yorkie <laughs> you know what i mean and and like i just, just call her i'm just completely ignorant i don't yeah, know yeah. anything you know but you just wouldn't you think bloodhound yeah i feel yeah. like if you yeah. see diesel car on the truck you're like oh we're fine i'm a deer for sure oh yeah well, yeah. yeah i mean he's got the look but, yeah but it's just the ignorant yeah that's just ignorance in me like saying that you know like i know i'm wrong and i'm being silly a little but Really? Sure. If you don't know, oh my, my good buddy Ray, he's he's seventy years old and he's going to carry his tackle to the to the hit site. Yeah, yeah. But when he puts it down, he's going to work. He's going, yeah. And he's going to find your deer. That's cool. So you know they're 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 neat dogs. They're easy to handle. And I don't know why she asked that because she's got one. Yeah. With, it, yeah. with <laughs> it being a with it being we're getting close to what you were saying as the the hot end of the or I guess the hot part of the season where you start getting a ton of phone calls. Uh, you have a lot of people calling you saying, Hey, I shot this deer. Uh, I hit it. I think I hit it here. Um, it looks shots back. Like Todd was saying, his daughter yep. talked to you last year, hit it back. What, are you given, uh, any kind of insight or encouragement on, Hey, don't go track that deer. Hey, just back out. Or I, I definitely try to, in, in a lot of part, a lot of what we do is me trying to figure out forensics about, you know, is this deer, you know, dead, is it not dead? Right. When do we track it? If we think it's going to be dead um, and trying to figure out what's going on in my head before I get there. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I wish more people would actually call not just me, but your, your local tracker, whoever you trust as a tracker is call us before we, you go, before you go, before you do anything. If you're unsure, give us a call. We'd more than happy to talk with you. Yep. We're not trying to get a track. We're trying to save a deer from rotting in the woods and Sorry, making a Gary. bad decision. Yeah. I think a lot of people forget you. that. Um, <laughs> you, you've been on just as many tracks as your dog has. So yep. you've seen it all too. Like, yep. Just call you instead yep. of jumping in. Hey, everybody on live. So we're doing Facebook and Instagram. If you asked a question, we will get to it. We're just catching up and you know so we will get to it so don't bail on us We're trying to call us dickheads we'll get to your question mm-hmm. just so you know um yeah that's one thing man like in in my instance and you know people on live aren't going to know but they'll know when they hear the podcast i was so confident that deer was dead mm-hmm. that i was like oh we'll go in and then i was like oh shit but you know i also i don't know it's one of those things i can see why people don't call then go then call you know, I'm I, I'm an advocate. I mean, I've been in, we've all been a part of both here. Yeah. Todd and I, um, we're we're uh, drinking our bad luck away with the cherry bomb blondes right now. Yeah, they're like, gonna work. Do you need a refill? No, I'm good right now. Okay, me too. Um, so I get both, but um, in my defense, I was like, all right, I'm not going past this point. And I tried to keep that line that way. I'm like, I call Gary. Gary won't kick my ass and <laughs> drown me. He won't yell at me. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could sense it in your voice. You're scared of me. No. <laughs> so, did, did you go? No. no. So I, I promise. That, and so I get why people go and look too far, but it's like you don't want to like, it's just better, like in your instance with, with your daughter's deer, Todd, it's like, oh, I know this is like a marginal hit, but the deer's going to die. Yep. Instead of pushing it, we'll just give you a call. You know, Todd did the absolute right thing. He saw it was gut hit. He checked the arrow and knew it was gut hit. Don't even track it out and call. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's, and, and look what happened. Oh, it Diesel was right on the deer in eight minutes. Yeah. That's crazy. Done. And, and I think, you know, and I mentioned this to you yesterday, Kurt, is educating hunters to do the right thing after the shot before they call us. Um, so we have a, a, 
a fighting chance of of finding your deer or making it easier finding your deer. That's the okay. in, in, in us in, in the tracking community as a whole, we almost have to beg hunters, please just don't go in or please call us or you know, just because I and I hear it every day, every single day. Well, you know, I, I know I hit back and I waited a good twenty minutes before I tracked and I'm like <sighs> And it's, uh, it's, Tony, it's uh, no, you know, I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's, we have to keep in perspective. Not everybody knows, not everybody's been on 500 tracks before. Okay. Right. Let me, let, can I lay something out then that might help? Sure. When should someone call you? When they're unsure about what they're seeing. No matter what. No matter what. Okay. I wish whether you were around the, when I lost mine. Whether yeah. it be the shot. Yeah. Or whether it be the blood <laughs> in good. the first 20 yards. Yep. If either you, way. If you've got a scenario that you know, that you're just unsure or you, what you thought you saw is not matching the arrow yep. or the blood on the arrow is not what you, th this isn't long blood. I thought I drilled it. The blood's dark. What does this mean? Call, call your local tracker. It doesn't have to be me. Call anybody. You where, know, where do people find their local tracker? Uh, you can, you know, there's United Blood Trackers is a national organization. So you can go to unitedbloodtrackers.org. There's a find a tracker there. You know, and then there's, you know, a host of state networks across the United States that that have um, um, teams available within the network. Or, you know, ask your buddy, hey, have you ever used a dog before? Who do you trust? Or, mm -hmm. you know, so it's getting easier to find a dog. There's there's definitely more of them. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, there's a good question. Uh, Walder Bach on Instagram asks, I got a freak four-year-old pheasant dog, German short hair. Can I train him to track deer? Yes. In, in general terms, yes. Um, you can train any, any dogs got the ability to track deer. It's whether they want to or not. The bird breeds are kind of hard because they're nose up dogs. They're not necessarily nose down dogs, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's plenty of, you know, GSPs, wire hairs, you know, um, and labs doing good work. Mm -hmm. Beagles. Beagles. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Nice. You're yep. a beagle guy, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. Doug's uh, always been a beagle Logan guy. James 09, thank you, Gary, for helping me find my deer last week. Oh, you're welcome, brother. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Can Diesel get a snacker? What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> this is an inside joke or something or what? Uh, yeah, that's we, we jokingly call uh, uh, the apple pie girl. That's Diesel's uh, aunt. Uh, she's oh. uh, my best friend's wife. Um, but... Diesel's high on snackers. His is, is uh, frozen chicken feet. I think we talked about it before. Oh. He's eight o'clock. He's looking at me. He wants his foot. That's awesome. <laughs> he wants his chicken feet. <laughs> he wants his foot. Yeah. Okay. E I found the deer. Where's my foot? I need this foot, dude. <laughs> yep. Um, e James eighty seven for Gary colorblind hunter here started training a oh geez head head a, ter head a terrier. Jeez, I don't know, dude. I'm sorry to help. She's just over a year old, and we've uh, and I've noticed she's regressed a bit. Recently, with staying on practice trails, should I be concerned? Uh, I need to know, you know, more information about, you know, how you're training, what your training techniques in, in that. But, you know, feel free to message me after. But, you know, training a tracking dog isn't rocket sciences. I, I think we talked about this mm -hmm. last time. It's not real difficult, but you need to get the basics down, um, you know, first. But I'd, I'd need to know more information. I'd like to help. But, you know, maybe message me on my page. I can help you. Yeah. Uh, Matt Rose, congrats on your super giant you just shot, buddy. Good luck, fellas. Hope none of you need diesel. <laughs> <laughs> You're too late. But You're too late. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guy, this I I just there's Kyle Wingmaster. Not to start anything. But I love when that ha is the first it thing I read. Uh, Jordan, your arm's getting tired over there. Nope, Round of applause for Jordan running the phones. God, just a valued intern right there. Uh, all right, not to start anything, but Minnesota legalized crossbow for everyone this year, and I've seen a few dog recovery picks. Do you or the tracking association see more or less wounded deer versus compounds or equal? No, I don't think I see one over the other. I think we, I would say we're probably a third crossbow and two-thirds compound somewhere in there. Um, we definitely see a lot of new hunters with crossbows just because – you know, in theory, you can go buy a crossbow on Friday and be in the woods on Saturday, which is a little scary. Um, you know, and, and that leads to, you know, maybe not so experienced hunters hunting. Yeah. Um, you like know, knowledge on shot placement or nerves and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, you know, analyzing what happened afterwards and the correct decisions. You know, everybody's going to be, 
you know, new to that respect, but I, I don't see a ton of, you know, it's not like 70% of our tracks are crossbows. We see, yeah. we see it all over the board. Hey, yeah. You pull up your phone, Doug. Let's share, share the live to our group. If you can do that for us. Do you and get it, a lot, do you get a lot of gun hunters? No, no, no. I get, you know, gun season for us is, is a little, is a little weird every year. It runs in streaks. I, I bet you, I don't get 10 calls first gun season. Really? No. Hmm. No, definitely, definitely not what the bow hunters are are calling for. That surprises me, and also doesn't surprise me. Well, you know, at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, really? Ah, okay. You it's know? definitely a different weapon, obviously, right? I mean, there's, you know, you can hit a buck marginally with a slug gun and get away with it. Yeah, you, know, you can where, shoulder hit a buck with a slug and yeah. knock him down and get another one. I don't. You know, and the problem with slug guns is, you know, they're or muzzle loaders or now with the straight wall cartridges, is I don't have an arrow to analyze. Right. We've got mm-hmm. a different reaction on a buck and yep. all kind of things going against us. Well, he was standing out in that field. Well, where at? I don't know. He was out there, I guess, six Somewhere yards. between this 50-yard mark and that corn <laughs> stock, yeah. yeah. So it's it's more difficult tracking tracking rifle hit. Or, oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you think the straight wall cartridge thing in Illinois this year is going to cause any sort of... Uh, yes. Uh, yes, okay. You see what I'm asking already. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to ask, and you knew what I was going to ask. Talking, yeah. talking with the other trackers in the other states where these these cartridges have been legal for a while we're going to see small entrance holes generally and no exits yep. it's going to lead to less hmm. blood trails and and most likely more calls than lost deer unfortunately hmm. now that you know i'm not bad mouthing those cartridges i'm just saying you know it's, it's the reality of the bullet you know it's the reality of the weapon that's being used and unfortunately that's the track record so can't argue with data no, no it's it's good for business but you know, there's going to be a lot of lost deer. Hmm. I really think so. So you said diesel is five, six? He's five You're, and a half, yeah. Five and a half, yep. Do you, so is this the first tracking dog? I guess I'm trying to catch up again. And maybe yep. you already said this. Is this the first one you've yes. had? Yep. Yep. So are you going to have a, a pup as a replacement? And what time would you start doing that? <sighs> well, I don't know. I, I need to start thinking about it quick if I'm going to do it because... You know, you don't want to have to think about that. I'm just, I'm yeah. Like diesel could be like a mentor or whatever type. Yeah, of, yeah. You know, you want to, you want to. It's a great question, Ross. I, I wanted that, but I wondered that, but I didn't want to ask it. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't word it right, but that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> he's, he's approaching his prime right now, and I think you know six, seven, eight. You know, and then he's yep. going to start going downhill. You see how hard he works, and you know he's not going to last forever. But you know, I need to get going on another dog if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. We'll okay. see. Yep. Are you saying you're not saying you're getting old? No, it's not me. But you know, you, you have to keep it's in a mind. A lot of work is that you know I I'm not old, but I am 52 years old, and doing what I do, you know, putting you know 150 or 200 miles on my feet every year is rough. Um, but you know the the amount of time that I've poured into diesel. Yeah, he's like I, he's your he's your partner. I, I've made a life commitment. Yep. Yeah. You know for. 10, 11, 12 years, however long he's here, I've made a commitment to him, and he's, he's, he's what I do. Yeah. I yeah. work. It's my wife, my work, and Diesel. It's yeah. easy to see that you guys are a team, though. I mean, yeah. you guys got it down pat. You roll out, get the harness on, get the yep. the walkie-talkie or the, the GPS out, and it's just it's yeah, a, it's a program. Yep. It's cool. He, he yep. knows the drill, too. Yeah. It's amazing. Yep. I know. Like, I, I, I love that dog, man. And I'm not, like, I grew up a dog guy, and I had too many heartbreaks with dogs, and I'm almost like I'm that dude who like got his heart broke by a girl with with like dogs, and I'll just never date again. And I'm just like heartbroken. I'm that way with dogs. Like I've had my heart broken by dogs with like some health issues. I'm just like never getting another dog. And I, I you could, I'm that way, right? Yeah. Like I don't. I usually don't want dogs around me. I like dogs, but I'm just like I don't. I can't get close to a dog. I'm I'm like actively resistant to dogs. <laughs> and Diesel's like the one where I'm like, sup, buddy. I'm the, I don't pet dogs. I guess I sound like the biggest asshole, but it's resistance to love is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But Diesel, I'm like, I will love on Diesel. He's an awesome dog. You know? Yeah. He's, in the off season, he's cool. Yeah. He's, he really is. But like when you guys see him, he's he is all business. It's all business. Yeah. I, I took a t- yeah. some time and thanked him the other day. He's like getting him. amped up. Like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm back to business. We're popping his neck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, yeah. damn, that dog just popped his neck. Got some smelling salts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know. But here's the other thing too is I don't. You know, the connection that he and I have, and one of the reasons that we work so well together is because of that connection. I don't know if, man, it'd be awful hard to get another dog because it'd be almost like 
cheating on my yeah. wife you know what i mean it's like yeah, yeah. Could, i don't know i don't know if i can do this yeah i don't understand i just i don't know call me weird but i, no, I, I get it. no you're not weird you're older you're bringing a new one he's like, it. Oh, oh, it's gonna, i'm gonna crush what's going on here yep all right he, yep. here's a great question here on instagram um by the way we could have just like set this up like a podcast and done the camera angles with the switcher but we kind of went raw not no pun intended we went raw dog on this one just to like <laughs> to get it out um Newbie S92 uh, just joined. Sorry if it's been asked. Uh, what direction do you normally see tracks go on different hits? For example, gut liver shot deer, head to water gen- generally, or do they generally keep their path? Good question. I hear it a lot. Um, you know, you hear that propensity of gut shot deer go to water. I, th- I think it's a total myth. Um, do we hmm. find deer in water? Yes. Do we find deer not in water who had plenty of opportunity to go to water? Yes. You know, I'll check a water source as a last resort, but to say that gut shot deer go to water all the time, no. That's that's surprising. Yeah, I've always heard no. that one. It's a big yep. statement right there. No, I I don't Quit think tickling you, the intern, Eric. I don't think you're going <laughs> to get any tracker to tell you any differently. I don't think. I mean, really? I you know we find deer in water. Don't get me wrong, but not to the extent that people think we do. Yeah, because I always remember growing up, it's like, you got shot a deer, go to water. He's going to be in the water water in the morning. You know, stomach's burning, he's in the water. Here's the reality. A wounded deer that thinks they're going to die, they're going to do whatever they want to do or whatever they're capable of doing. Doesn't matter. We find plenty of them bedded out in the open. I guess we'd probably do the same, though. Well, sure. Sure. If we're we're shot and going to die, we're going to do whatever whatever we want to do. I, I think the only sort of correlation that that relates to this question is home range bucks tend to stay home if they're if they know they're screwed um if they know they're going to die they're hurt bad they tend to stay home um bucks that you haven't seen before that one one trip through and you shoot them they tend to go back home because they've spent the summer in a different area in a different bedding area they feel comfortable and i tell hunters all the time if you're sick or you're hurt where do you want to be Home bed. You want to be at my house. You want to be home. Yeah. Where you feel comfortable and you feel safe. That's a good point. Bucks do the same thing. Yeah, that's generally. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense when you think about it. So, yep. Gary, the first time that I met you was uh, a couple years ago tracking that one that I shot, yep. and we ended up finding him dead in the winter. Yep. Do you get a lot of feedback from hunters where you track a deer, they don't, you don't find it, it's still alive, and then days, weeks, months later, they say, oh, ended up finding him. Yeah, there, you know, there's there's a percentage of deer that we track that are dead when we track them and we do not find them. It's not often at all, but it does happen where we, we call it leaving one in the woods. Um, it's reality. You track long enough, it's a gonna dog is going to leave one. Yep. Dog's going to have a bad day. There's whatever scent not present that they need. Maybe I pulled the dog off, whatever. Um, there is a small percentage of deer that we're going to leave in the woods. It's just going to happen. Now, if you're leaving a lot of deer in the woods, there's a problem. But like your deer that we tracked, you know, that deer was still alive when we tracked it. You had him on trail camera later and then found him dead, you know, after that. So in theory, you know, Diesel was right. Well, it was interesting though. And and Kurt, you were on that track with Mm -hmm. us. You know, we, it was amazing to watch that dog work. And that was my first time ever meeting you and Diesel and then seeing a dog work. Yeah. Yeah, same. And, and we tracked him. I don't know. What was it? over a half a mile a long way long way and it was a, a good quarter mile between last blood and second to last blood yep. it was it seemed like it was so far just from like all the it seems like way because f- there's a lot going through all our heads we're trying to process and decipher yep. and we're like and, and we had never we didn't know you we didn't know dogs we were kind of like is that the blood that right. it's like, but also it's like, of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> in, in retrospect, of course it was. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the interesting part of the story is so January we find the deer dead. He's basically Euro, Euroed out his, there's no hair. There's no hide. There's nothing. Yep. It's like, man, how long was this deer dead? You know what? Cause he basically reversed back up and he was mm-hmm. a couple hundred yards from the stand where I shot him. Stayed home. Stayed mm-hmm. home. He's very close to his home range. Damn. And I was like, that dog, Damn it, we should have went up on that ridge. He probably was up there dead while we were down in that bottom. Mm-hmm. Dang it. Could have been. And then in March, when I'm out there pulling cameras that are in different spots on the farms, here's this camera that's another quarter of a mile in a different direction, December 26th, and here's a picture of that buck. 
yep. a month and a half after I shot it. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Still yep. alive. No kidding. Yeah, it was kind of yep. crazy. Huh. See, here's the, here's the thing, and I, I explained this really well to Kurt. I, hopefully, I did. Is that you know after a, a tracking dog gets a number of seasons under their belt, and they smell enough wounded deer, and then they smell enough dead deer, they begin to notice the difference. And some dogs are better at it than others. Um, but a dog like a Bavarian, um, they, they'll just act different on a track that the deer isn't dead. Yours is a great example. You saw what he looked like on your deer and you saw what he looked like on your daughter's deer, two completely different dogs. Yep. That's when I turn around and say, Hey, my dog's telling me your deer isn't dead. But to, to credit to you though, you know, you're like, we can keep going if you want you, we can keep going if you, and we, yeah, you didn't talk yeah. us out of going. No, not at no. all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. So. But, you know, like, Kurt, if, if if you stuck that deer, you know, that we tracked like you thought we did, it would have been less than 20 minutes. And yeah. It would have been game over. And, well, it, And it, you know right away when you see him start working, like, yeah. do you know if it's a dead deer or not? Yeah. Dude. I can tell. Usually I can tell. You know, like that really big deer that we that we found on Sunday, um, I could have told you in the first 100 yards, he's, he's dead. We're going to find it. It's just a matter of when and where. Hmm. I mean, I, you, you almost can you almost can get to the point where you want to turn it around to the hunter and say, "We're in business. Keep up." Yeah. Or, oh man, this is going to be a nightmare. Well, I could kind of tell even from that track, you know, um, like Diesel right away you could tell when it was like good, and then it was like, "Yep." He started acting just like unconvinced. Yep. You know, he's just kind of like. I don't know. And then you were kind of looking at me like, dude, I don't know. He, he's kind of acting like this deer's not dead. I'm like, we had a video, and the video was a little deceiving. I'm like, I don't know. I get I I understand what you're saying. I respect it. And I don't want to question Diesel because he a knows hard more sell. than we know. But but it turns out it's it's what we thought. He was what, not, what, he, he, Diesel was right. He was telling us what <clears> – basically telling us through body language. Like you said, I wish I could talk to him. Yeah. Like if you could probably give anything to just talk to Diesel. <laughs> could like, you even imagine – the dog just be like, hey, 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 it's over here, hey. He's like, God, you guys are dumb. Like, You're hey, stupid. You wouldn't, have to, you wouldn't have to have a chicken foot on you, would you? <laughs> if, I, if he just like yeah. starts the track, looks back, if I find this deer, do I get a chicken foot? <laughs> they're probably, they're probably savages, like, we ain't finding this thing. Yeah. yeah just goes just, back uh, in the truck. They're just blunt. <laughs> yeah. he, go, he goes, I'm going back to the truck. Yeah. 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 Probably. Where, where'd you shoot it? Nah. <laughs> No, 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 you didn't. didn't. (laughs) From me and from a tracker perspective, it's easier for me to do it because, you know, I've seen, I'll see him do it 100 or 125 times a year, and it's not my deer. But I've got a hunter behind me who guarantees he drilled the deer, Mm -hmm. and my dog sucks, and you just can't walk. (laughs) You just can't find it. I love that. And it's it's a difficult situation because I want to do a good job for everybody I track for. The guy behind me thinks, knows his deer is dead. Yeah, me. You know, and, and, and no offense to you, but you're like, I know, I saw the video. I know what I'm looking at. And then I got this guy in front of me saying, my dog's telling me, what do you mean your dog's telling me your deer's not dead? But I see it 125 times a year. Well, here's the bottom you know? line. And I've said this, and I said this the other day when we were hanging out and doing this. I'm like, here's the bottom line. When someone goes, I smoked that deer and we didn't find it. If you smoked him, you would have found it. Right. right, and that's right. the bottom mm-hmm. line. Now, weird things can happen every once yep. in a while, and yep. you know, or you know, it's a thick area. It's CRP. It's brush. There's ditches. There's water, and you know, you just walk by it. Like, and I hate to even go back to this. My spring bear was the perfect example. I had two camera angles of me smoking this bear. Everyone's. It got to the point. Everyone's like. Well, it's one of them one in a million chances where you hit it perfect and it didn't die. And I'm like, shut up. That ain't, <laughs> that ain't right. And Ross shut and I went, dirty went horse back mouth. and we found it in 10 minutes. Yep. He just went down the hill and someone who said they found it didn't find it and we went and found it. Yep. Okay, that exactly. happens, right? It yep. just me, my season is just somebody's out to get me. Um, but uh, it's just one of those things. If you smoked it, it'd be dead. Yep. Gary, yep. I've got a question for you. Yeah. You say a percentage of the deer are left in the woods, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Of those deer, specifically the ones that you know are dead that you don't find, how many of those do you think are messed up by the hunters before you get there? They do something wrong. A fair amount. Yeah. You know, it doesn't do us any favors when you track too early and you push a deer. When you jump a deer and go back two hours later and you jump them again, you go back two hours later and jump them again, and now we got to go a mile and three-quarter 
a lot of things can happen in that mile and three quarter. Mm-hmm. The grid search you're afraid to tell me about because you're afraid I'm not going to come. You know, it, there's there's a lot of things going against us. But, you know, to be fair, at the end of the day, dogs can have bad days. Hunters can have, you know, handlers can have bad days. And maybe that, that deer is just not giving off what a dog, you know, thinks it needs or, or, or needs to follow it. Shit happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. but the the hunters have to do us a favor by keeping the track as clean as they can to, you know, to, to maximize their odds of us coming in and doing the work. I'm a big believer in, I, I've shot deer and, and smoked them and watched them drop. And then I've, I've shot deer and know that I hit them right in the middle. I mean, it's like maybe back of the lung, one lung liver and anybody that shoots a deer that is questionable, doesn't watch them drop, hear them drop, crash, anything like that. In my opinion, what I do is just get out of the tree and slip out of there like I slipped in yep. and don't even go find the arrow. Nope. Just, yep. it, we're, if you shoot it at night, then come back the next morning. Yep. But Ross. Don't even think about it. But Ross. Huh? But Ross. So let's bring this up while we're on it and while we're on live. Austin Chandler did that, Ross. Yeah. And his <laughs> buck got eaten by coyotes. Mm. And when we posted about it, it went viral Every podcast in the game that wanted to get in on the clout viralness talks shit about us. We're the pieces internet of shit. hated on us. We're pieces yep. of shit. <laughs> How dare us hit a deer and not go recover well, it right let's, away? Let's go yeah. down with him because yeah. he called you and he called me and we both we all talked about it. Wait, yeah. What do they always tell you? When in doubt, back, back out. Yeah. out. Yeah. Do we all agree Except with that? Except for Austin. <laughs> Except for Austin. <laughs> Except for yeah. Austin. How dare well, you, Austin? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a piece of shit hunter, you know? Yeah. Like Must not have much experience, Gary. That's what they said. A lot of yeah, a lot of guys will <laughs> a lot of guys will say, "Well, I'm worried about coyotes." I say, Here's what I say about coyotes. Coyotes are going to get your deer you know, if they want to, right? So if, if let's say that you've got a gut shot deer and that deer goes 200 yards and beds down. Yep. Coyotes find deer just like my dog does. They're walking through the woods. They hit a scent line and go, oh, I know what that is. I like that. Bang, 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 right to your deer. Yep. So or they win it. Smell on a rack of ribs. And, and it's Who's dinner cooking? time. And, right? and or you just shot him. He's gut shot. He's just laid down first, yep. you know, first dead you find, first bed you find him dead. Yep. Coyotes get on him, bump him up, and then you get called in behind that. Yep. And now, now they run him all over. Now he's yep. two miles away. So let's let's take that deer that that goes two hundred in beds. He's gonna take. He's gonna die normally six, eight, ten, twelve hours later, depending on the time of the year. If it's the rut, those times go way up. Yep. But. Um, so there's literally 200 yards of fishing line out there for coyotes to cross to find your deer. Yep. If you're worried about coyotes and you go in and, the, and you jump that deer, and now that deer is 1,500 yards, now you've got 1,500 yards of fishing line for that those coyotes to cross and find your buck. How right. dare That's you? That's a really good point. I would much rather just, if, if you bump the deer and he goes on to the neighbor, guess what? You ain't going to get your deer, and the coyotes are going to get it anyway. Yep. That's right. So... You know, I can't do anything about the coyotes, but I want to track a dead deer, not a pushed one. And if you want to go in and try and, you know. What um, coyote scent distract diesel or no? No. Generally, when coyotes are have been at the deer, he'll slow way down. Hmm. You know, at the pace w- which he tracks. Um, he'll, he'll go know, into it kind of cautious. Very cautious because yep. he knows a predator's been there. Mm-hmm. Right. Interesting. Yep. Yep. That's cool that you've seen that. Normally though. when, you know, I can pretty much tell. You know, he starts to go into sneak mode a little bit. I'm like, uh, the deer's close, and there's been coyotes. Oh, it's crazy because like your dog can basically talk because you just know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. So Gary, if you come up on a deer that's you know, let's say he's gut shot and he's ten hours into that ten and a half hours he needed to die, and he's just laying there can barely lift his head. Yep. What's Diesel do? Um, he wants. He wants it. He does. Yeah, and I have to. You know, obviously, you have to hold him back. Sure. I mean, yep. Um, but he's he's a predator at heart you right. know what i mean oh, yeah. he's, he's a dog i mean he's yeah if, yeah if if i let him he would be well i thought that was interesting though when we found george's deer how you let him have a minute of 
getting on the deer. Reward. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's reward. His, yeah. That's his, yeah, 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 go boy. And I yeah. just, I fire him up because that's that's his reward. He Absolutely. needs to know that yeah. I'm, yeah. He just, he just well, scored a touchdown. Just see, like, he's, he's chest up walking around like, yep, oh, yeah. did my job. I, I got yeah. it, yeah. Go that, fuck that, yourself. That, that's that's that chicken, <laughs> Where's that chicken <laughs> foot? He's celebrating yeah. doing this. Yeah. Doing a cel- <laughs> <laughs> little TD yeah. celebration. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like when I shot my lion, Trey's dogs. I just going to bring that up. He's like, I'm going to let him chew on him. I'm like, Dude, I don't care what I don't care what amount of hair they rip up after watching them work like this. Like they, that's their their that's, cat, man. Yep. That's their cat more than it's mine. Go for right. it, mm-hmm. you know. So pull the broad head out of it so they don't get cut and just let them kind of have their moment with them, you know. I think so. I think that's one thing I would I would definitely change. You know, for the for the trackers listening, that's one thing I definitely would change. I I want to be I want to fire him up at the deer. Yeah, yeah, go boy, go boy, and and I get really fired up too because I got adrenaline flowing just like you guys do. Right. Yeah. And that and that's his reward, but you know, it can go the other way too, where he can be sort of a dick at the deer. You yeah. know, he's he still thinks it's it's mine. Oh, literally, right. right. So like when the hunter goes to grab it, he's kind of well, like I mean, he's never bitten anybody, but I tell people do not touch the dog at the deer because you will get bit. As soon as I say that, nobody touches the the dog, which is fine with me, but he's never bitten anybody. Yeah. And I want to keep it that way. Yeah. But you, he's a friendly dog, but you just never know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a um, weird situation, especially at night. You got guys with flashlights and headlamps coming in, all and, kind of oh, yeah, shit going on. And all of a sudden, yeah. you know, and he's he's predator mode, really. I mean, yeah, yeah I get yeah. that. That makes sense. Yeah. He's in game mode. Don't fuck with him, dude. Yeah, you don't get yeah. snipped. He's at. fired up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's hit a couple of these Instagram questions. Us, P Snyder 04. I've been tracking deer now for about three seasons. Do you have any specific practice tracks in the off season? Don't know if you believe it's fully necessary. Oh, I definitely believe off season practice is. 100 percent necessary um you hire emo kids to come in let them <laughs> cut themselves and run and hide in the woods and then have the dog <laughs> yeah that's I, that's a not great right idea. is it that's not right I'm sorry. i shouldn't have done ohio's that. for lovers <laughs> <I'm blaring it. laughs> listen i don't think about the things i say before i say them <laughs> sorry gary <laughs> no I, I i think off-season practice you know for for a new dog you can teach them a lot of things in off-season but I think off-season practice is as much for the handler as it is the dog. Yeah. Your job as a handler is to learn that dog. The only way you're going to do that is spend time behind it. If you're not running that dog on practice lines throughout the summer, you're missing hundreds of hours of time behind your dog. And tracking is not just hanging onto the lead and following the dog. That's so, not what it's so about. So what do you do, Gary, as far as uh, how do you how do you practice during the summer? Well, you... we've we've got we've got specific we call them tracking shoes that accept uh, um, two hooves of a deer. Yeah, and you you know basically strap them on your boots, um, and you walk and you can create a, a mock track. Um, you can use blood. I I don't use blood in the off season. Um, I wouldn't suggest at a certain point in a dog's career that you need to move away from blood and get them on hoof scent only. Um, but you know we'll we'll lay practice lines and you know at at diesel stage it's more of keeping him busy and yeah. occupied and sort of in the game than it is teaching him anything i can't i don't think i'm going to be able to teach that dog anything in practice right. at this point just because he's seen so much yeah it's more of keeping him in keeping the batting cages in the off season so do you use any scent during the summer months just the hoof scent it's just like it's like, it's like shooting your bow all summer instead of picking it up right at yep when season starts yeah, right. keeping them fresh on the mitts yep. yeah. yeah and we we keeping can try and like a veteran dog like that we can try to screw him up we can we can track to a river get in the river and go you know, 60 yards down river and then get back up and go the other way and force him to figure out where did it, did it cross? Did it go this way and search? But it's really us learning the dog. Mm-hmm, That's right. what off season yep. practice is. And and people that don't practice in the off season, generally it shows. I mean, I, yeah. and again, that's not like, you know, in it's some ring do- rust. Some dogs are just natural and that's, that's great. I'm, you know, I'm not putting anybody that down that doesn't practice, but generally the people that put in more time it shows okay but, um uncle fuzz four i don't know if you know this guy by I, the way this question's asked gary's dog is truly a wiener dog at heart <laughs> that's my buddy josh okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> i figured it had, it had been someone i knew you that, okay. that's okay josh because my wiener dog has bailed you out a couple times <laughs> oh, oh there it is that's fired i'll get josh in here and have a debate it sounds like yeah, um, i don't think you want to bit debate with josh until you've seen him by the way i'm not trying to like <laughs> stir up anything and we do like mike over at drone deer recovery but they have entered the chat cool. um oh so uh <laughs> Clemis 31 question what are some reasons for the dog to never pick up the scent 
I went on a 17 minute 900 yard track tonight. Easy track for the dog. Last night walked in circles for two hours and never got a scent. Uh, and then he added, still in training. That could be a lot of things. Your, your dog just might have told you that the deer wasn't dead. Um, you know, I, you know, there could be a ton of reasons why there wasn't anything there for the dog to pick up. Generally, you know, if you're still, you know, training with your dog, it could be, you know, maybe the dog just didn't recognize that particular scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, there might not be a lot of sun on the ground. There's, there could be a thousand different reasons, but it's a learning experience and you just learn something. So apply it to the next one. Uh, A couple comments in here. Uh, Ross is still alive. Here's another comment. Wow, is that Ross? Didn't know he's still podcast. <laughs> That's all right. So coming out, uh, of re- coming out of retirement. This is uh, one of our buddies, Zach Foster. He asks, uh, have you ever decided to not go on a track job because you took the information and didn't think it was lethal and the hunter ended up finding the deer? Very specific, but great question. So not that I can think of. I don't, I don't, I don't screen a lot of calls except for November when it's just bananas. Just too much. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense for me to drive three hours on a shoulder hit with four inches of penetration. I, you know, when I've got four gut shots at the, you know, around the house, but that doesn't mean that, you know, that track is not worth taking, but I, I have to be sort of have a common sense approach about what so I got to try not to kill you or your dog. Right. Yeah. But you know, like now I, I, I haven't turned a track down yet this year. I'm going. Mm-hmm. If if a hunter wants me there, I'm I'm going because yeah. you know I have the time and I want to track. I mean I'm I drove two and a half hours to on a what I knew was a strap hit, you know that we weren't going to find probably not going to find, um, but the hunter wanted me there and I gave him the expectations. He goes, I just want to make sure. Cool, I'm on my way. Yeah, yeah, that's for awesome. sure. Well, I mean it's the hunters. Go, you never know. Taking the extra effort to recover the deer, which you got to give him credit for yep. that, and got to yep. give you credit for yep. committing to that. Great question, Zach. Thanks yep. for that. Uh, keep drinking them, boys. Grant, Grant. Uh, so he's got the same last name as Cole. I'm gonna go Jagger. <laughs> I think that's his brother. Oh, then probably right. <laughs> I'd imagine. <laughs> Have you ever, Kyle Wingmaster? He's a turkey guy and and a big supporter of what we do. So thanks, Kyle. Have you ever taken your dog on a wounded turkey track? No. No, that's no. an interesting question. That's a good question. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he probably could do it. Yeah, you know, it's a wounded animal. You know, I, you put him <laughs> on the area and you say, "Go to work." Yeah, the, and he, the last thing I want to do is get diesel on turkeys. Turkeys <laughs> is a tracking dog's nemesis. I bet. Well, really? they fly. Yeah. Well, they fly. <laughs> not only that, but it, they're they're yeah. interesting to dogs for whatever reason, whether they smell a certain way, but. The last thing I wanted, I, I've spent a lot of time keeping diesel off the turkeys. Well, you know, birds are a government <laughs> conspiracy anyway, and turkeys are just... Yeah, they're all cameras. <laughs> yeah. That's why your dog's so weirded out by Plus, he's going to have to... Com- uh, it's compete. my favorite conspiracy. He's going to have to compete with bobcats, he can too. Smell, he can smell the wire. A wounded turkey and bobcats going to be on He can smell that. the wire. He can smell the electronics <laughs> in them. <laughs> he picks up the Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're putting on Bluetooth. Uh, Bowen and League responded to Kyle. I know a guy that did that, and the bird was found. Yeah. Um, here's another comment. HRC 417. Holy shit. Who's a bearded guy on the end? Um, I just love <laughs> these Ross comments. Ross hasn't been here literally in a podcast for how long? Seven, eight months. Yeah. Who are you? Jeez. <laughs> Who are you? Um, <laughs> That's been a long time, man. Okay. This is a good question. This Tr- is a good question. Tristan Green 18. I don't know if you guys can see where I'm at here yep. at the top. Yep. I'll, I'll always you. scroll the top for on these questions. All right. How bad does the weather have to be for you not to track? Like, how much does hot, dry weather affect the scent? Also, does low barometric pressure affect tracking? Well, there's no weather that's going to stop me from tracking unless it's, you know, thunderstorm and we've got lightning. and Tornado. You know, um, you know when it's dangerous, we're not going to go. But, you know, we've tracked in, you know, blowing blizzards, snowstorms. When it took me an hour and a half to get 20 miles to get there, I did that for my taxidermist. Um, you should we, get free tax in army. We, just saying. We, yeah, we, Nobody's listening. And, uh, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, we, we've tracked in the pouring rain last week. I ruined my phone because of it. I got a new phone. Um, but, um, you know, I don't, you know, hot and dry conditions are never going to stop me, but I just need to manage hunter expectations. And the fact that, Hey guys, tracking, you know, conditions right now, sending conditions suck. You need to help me out. You can't muck up a track afterwards don't beat it up and then call me after you've grid search now it's going to be almost impossible but stop me from going no i'm going you're going yeah yep 
Um, this is a, a fun question. Adam Mueller, 95. <laughs> By the way, I, I'm hitting Instagram questions first, guys, for everybody on Facebook, oh, just because. Did you get the last part of the barometric pressure? Oh, 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 oh the, yeah, yeah. the barometric pressure. We think there might be a connection. Um, I don't think anybody has, has produced enough data yet you know, to say it, but there's all kind of things. Humidity is going to change the sending conditions. I, I would almost guarantee you that barometric pressure will change sending conditions. Everything that's, you know, happening in the environment is going to check. Yeah. Going to, okay. You know, what's the exact effect? I can't tell you, but I think you can talk minimal, to him, you can know. It's something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, your phone has to be going off because we're getting GSM noise and that's got it. Are you getting called for tracks? Probably. Sorry, Probably. guys. <laughs> He's on a live right now. He's doing Sorry. a podcast. <laughs> um, this is a fun one. Adam, you are 95. Who's Diesel's best friend that can't shoot for shit? Uh, that would be you, Adam. It's the guy who asked the question. Damn it. <laughs> how, many, how many times has he called you? Uh, uh, we've tracked for him for a couple times. <laughs> Just a couple. It's, shout it's, out to Adam. It's shout fun. out to Adam. Um, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, Diesel and Adam have a connection. There, there is something there between those two, and when when Adam comes over to the house, Diesel's like, "That's my guy." Really? He's just <laughs> yeah, the homie, I guess. Yeah, he's he's, 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 he's got he's chicken feet. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. He Adam might. just has a chicken foot in his pocket. <laughs> he's just slipping him chicken. He's slipping yeah. him chicken feet. He's like my guy. Yeah, <laughs> my yep. dude, find my deer. Yeah. Don't tell, <laughs> don't tell Dad. Uh, okay, this is a good question. We I know we touched on it last time. Pinch Point Outdoors. Uh, love your Instagram name, by the way. Please touch on moisture, precipitation, and how it affects a track. I have heard rain can actually be better than dry conditions. Yep. We want moisture on the ground. Um, blood is for us tracking. We have to track visually. A dog does not track visually necessarily that we think, right? I don't know if they see I don't know if he sees blood and rack. He he's he's tracking with his nose. So when we don't have blood, we think there's not scent there. If you take if you've got a, I think I said this last time, yep. if you've got a drop of blood in your countertop and you put water on it, blood is still there. The scent is still there. It's just spread out. Yep. So if it's hot and dry and Multiplies. windy, and I know that I've got your gut shot in the morning, I want some dew in the ground. Yep. I want it to rain overnight. I want that moisture to, you know, to loosen up that scent, trap that scent on that ground. Hot, dry, and windy, that scent's being blown all over the place. And it's, you know, being in an open field when there's dust blowing around, that's brutal. It'd be the same yeah. thing as going in and hanging a deer stand, thinking you're going to get a set up on a big, big buck, and oh, there's a rain coming in, going to wash all my scent away. I, I, I thought that nice until we did that podcast. Yeah, we yeah. talked about it. Yeah, we talked about well, that. Well, yep. I can name, I can name one specifically that hates us and we hate him that I could call out about <laughs> him doing a video. I go in and check my trail cam. We all know what I'm talking about. Yep, I go in and check my trail cams when it's raining and it comes in and washes my shit away. Yeah, it's, it's like you're wrong. You yeah. cocky You're fuck. wrong. <laughs> yeah. But but I thought it too from Yeah, I did too. We all did. So that's all I said. And there's there's a lot of times like, you know, if if the sending conditions are bad and you take the track at three o'clock and your dog struggles and you come back at night when all that when, when the moisture when the wind is, is you know is is coming down and that that flow is going down towards the ground and it gets cooler out and all of a sudden the dog picks it up and bang yep. it's on it's yep. that's how it can it can affect it um you know but like i said when we've diesel's just did an outstanding job with six inches of snow and i couldn't i couldn't see 20 feet in front of me from the that's flow crazy and, and just pushing his nose through the snow and just Bang, 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 and uncovering blood as he pushes his nose. The snow is probably like some sort of like capsule. Yep, yep. In a weird now, way to like explain that. You, you know? can you can get sponge. some ice on top that will block it, but generally, you know, I want capsule sponge would probably been the better. Uh, I know what you're. I know what you're saying. Ross nodded <laughs> yeah, in agreement when I said he's I was like, like, oh yeah, I yeah, yeah <laughs> capsule. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> a rider 35. When contacting a tracker, what questions should you ask to find out if they are a good tracker and have experience? What answers would you consider a red flag when asking them questions? That's a good that question. That's a very good question. Good um, let's see. If, uh, questions. I zoomed in I, a little bit. Here. I don't necessarily know if you can ask questions to find out if somebody's good. I, I think you, in the off season, the best thing that you can possibly do is contact a guy that's close to you or a girl that's close to you or a tracking team that's close and you know and feel them out um generally you can talk to somebody and say hey yeah this, you know it's a pretty good person or no i think he's you know full shit or whatever but you know and i think you know a couple of the questions you could ask is what's your experience level you know how long you've been doing this how many recoveries do you have 
How many tracks do you take? Um, you know, what kind of dog do you have? I mean, just, you know, any tracker worth his salt is going to tell you they're going to give you the resume. Right? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I think the second part of this is, is interesting. What answers would you consider a, a red flag? If you're talking to a tracking team and they're saying, oh, you know, we, we tracked 67 deer last year and we found 63 of them. No, you didn't. Hang up the phone and call somebody else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because it, it's just not realistic. I think you can tell a lot about a person if when, when you just talk to them on the phone, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. you know, if they're being cocky right out of the gate and we found all these deer. We want 100 we tracks, missed, we found 100. We ain't missed a We're one. We're 100%. And, yep. You know, that's, or... Another one that doesn't know how to communicate or talk on the phone, you know, that's that's a red flag for me. Uh, if yep. you can just talk and be transparent and be honest, normal. like that's yep. going to take you a long ways. Yep. I, and I tell all the hunters that I talk with, they're sort of, you know, feeling me out. The only thing I can promise you, I can't promise you we're going to find your deer, but what I do, will promise you is I'm going to bust my ass trying. That's right. it. That's, like an ass that's all it takes. And I'm I'm not there necessarily to make friends, but you know, like you know, all you guys I met tracking, and, and that's all cool. I'm not there to make friends. No, nope. I'm not there to put. You know, I'm there to put my dog down. We're there to get a job done, and I'm going to do whatever I can to do it. I think most people would appreciate that, though. Like, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. When it's business, it's business. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yep. So, um, great question. Um, great shout question. out uh, Kickapoo Creek Knife Company. Shout out. What up, what up? The they knives made, are working. They're awesome knives. Let me zoom out a minute just so I can. Hey, there's my wife. Oh, you see her in there? She's stalking on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Making sure I'm at the podcast. Yeah, not yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably think you got a girlfriend. Making sure you're drinking water. I, I do. It's diesel. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> uh, Paul Serretta. What's up, Paul? We talked talked previously about how water and moisture can help. What amount is too much and what's too much snow? I don't know. Um, you know, we struggled on a track last week after some rain. Diesel got to a waterway and uh, in a field and completely lost it. It poured all night. Generally, I didn't expect to have a an issue with that track. It did. You know, was it water? Was it thirty five mile an hour straight line winds? I don't know. But he got to a you know a, a waterway and just completely hit a wall. Yep. Yeah, and my heart sank because I know what, what deer we were tracking, and I'm like, oh, I got three guys behind me. I think my dog sucks, and I don't have scent. And I restarted him three times, and then. All of a sudden, instead of going out in that waterway where they know that they had blood, he takes a right down the um, tree line and starts immediately picks it up, tracking again. Two hundred yards later, bang, deer. No, no kidding. so it must be you know that the you know the deer backtracked or did something or that scent was different on that edge than it was out in the middle of a field. Yeah. It's like thermals cutting off it or I mean, whatever. Who knows, but right? you restarted him three times. Three times. Dang. How often it, do you see him backtrack? Quite I a bit. I hear that a lot. Quite a bit. Like a lot of people find their deer, you know, 100 yards from when I shot them, but they went 500 yards one way and they yep. came back. And again, I think it's an evasive, a, like the a home purposeful, thing you're talking about. evasive yeah. maneuver. Kind of like that J-hook. I'm going to go up this way and I'm going to come back and I'm going to watch up there because that's what's going to follow me. It's a juke, yeah. Yeah, I get yep. it. I mean. Yeah, it makes sense. They got enough time to think about it. That's what we think anyway. I might, you know. We might be completely hey, it wrong sounds about good. that, but it's logical. <laughs> it's, it's, really it's believable. <laughs> yeah. This is a funny question. Tynes Teeth Aries, what's your Instagram name? How many of the bugs that are found end up being as big as the hunter thought? <laughs> Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's a great one. question. Ooh, we're getting into some feels here, boys. <laughs> <It's> spicy. <laughs> it's a, a management fair, buck. There's a, a management fair buck. Amount. Fair there, amount. There's definitely that's ground a shrinkage. Would you say thing. most? Ground shrinkage is a thing. So you'd say most. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, just leave yeah. it there. You're going to leave it there. <laughs> in fact, Even Diesel I, knows. I had this discussion with, with Diesel my Diesel looks back. <laughs> Dick is like, it's a two-year-old. It's a two-year-old. The, two the whole time the hunter's like, it's a 200 inch and Diesel just looks back and goes. <laughs> just like shake his head. Diesel finds it and runs back to the truck. He's just like, yeah. get me out of here. There's, yeah. there's always ass. a couple of deer that we track to every year where the hunter turns to me and goes, that's not my deer. <laughs> oh my! Uh, Whoops! Whose is it? And it's like he started at your hit site. He walked 450 yards right to your deer. How uh, many? How many bow shot deer are just laying in your woods that we just stumbled on? <laughs> right. yeah. That's not my deer. That's though. not my deer. For I'm sure. not putting my tag I'm not, on that. Yeah, I'm not taking that. You got to tag it. Okay. Diesel's uh, got to tag it. Has anybody in here like not experienced ground shrinkage? Oh yeah, oh, we all. Uh, that's, that's a guess. Yeah. It's Here's a thing. Guy. I mean, it's yeah. just that's why we're laughing so hard. Yeah, it's yeah. real. Well, we, all <laughs> it's real. we all say it's bigger than it is. Come on, boys. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I, not. Maybe not, Doug. 
But well, think, there's the rare case. Maybe not Doug. Bigger than <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. By the way, Gary, we're an hour and 25 minutes on this. If you got to go to the bathroom, you can just go to the oh, bathroom I'm, for the I'm, record. I'm good, really. You're good? Okay. Yeah, I just, I'm good. We're all, I, well, I got it. He's up. used to tracking forever. The guy's got to walk fucking 30 miles a day. <laughs> I'm trying to get through these, you know, because there's some great questions in here. Keep them coming. Uh, what is the average length of track in terms of distance? I think my average recovery rate over the last three years is 600 yards or so. Average. Average. Damn. And I, you know. It's pretty good. Um, you know, and we get the occasional, well, 50 yards from, you know, from where the hunter didn't see him and rarely, but, you know, we find, we find quite a few deer over a thousand yards, mile, mile and a half, two miles. We found one in Wisconsin last year, three and a half miles. Holy smokes. I mean, it's just, you know. And and did they ran through the whole way? What's that? Did the dog just run straight to it the whole way? Yeah, he's he. The deer's dead. Keep following, dummy. Wow, three. Yeah, miles. we're just so three and a half miles. Keep is up. that zigzagging or is that straight line? No, just pretty much a you know a Damn. big hook and that's crazy. You, I that never even, is that after they bumped them. Supposedly they, the deer wasn't tracked, but when a deer goes three and a half miles, that's fatally hit. Something happened. That's that seems what I'm. Right. That's what I'm getting at. Coyotes, yeah. so maybe. So, well, yeah, coyotes, coyotes could have bumped them or whatever. Something bumped it. What this yeah. might be a question that we might not know. Maybe somebody knows. What's an acre in yards across? Oh, I don't know. Uh, a, a square? A quarter mile. So if you take a forty, I think it's four hundred and forty yards across that. Like straight line, all four sides are are thirteen hundred feet. A quarter mile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A forty-acre square would be a quarter mile on each side. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. You knew that. Okay. So just yeah. I was going to go. And s- I'm not doing the math. <laughs> I was so. going to go seventeen sixties a mile. <laughs> Start backing it down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice job, Todd. Good job, Todd. You're- <laughs> yeah, I would have said brown. You're <laughs> brown. You get the hose. <laughs> um, this question, Nandez sixty two. As a dog tracker, what is your opinion on thermal drone recoveries? We kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. We hit on that. Yeah, how much do you want me to go into it? I mean, what what is your opinion on the thermal thing? All right, you know, let's just get into it. We're on the drone thing again. We're an hour and 25 in. I've had two two good tall beers here. And drone deer recovery, whether it's the brand, the, the one who kind of made it mainstream, Mike mm-hmm. Yoder yep. and the guys at Drone yep. Deer Recovery. You know, we all know the green logo. We had Mike on. He's a great dude. I've had a great podcast. Yeah, we podcast with you and Mike in the same, uh, probably a couple months. I, I can't really remember our timeline. Yeah, I'd say within a couple months. Yeah, yeah. around there. And, and They're close to each other. What's interesting about the two is the dog tracking community, there's a community. Mm-hmm. And the, now drone deer recovery or drone everything kind of has its own community as mm-hmm. well. And I don't know if there's this like animosity but I've had a couple people message where they wanted a drone guy and a dog recovery guy to be on the same podcast and duke it out, kind of. Mm-hmm. And that's like messages we've gotten. Yeah. But we're not in the game either way. So I'm just curious, like, where is there an animosity with drone guys and dog guys? Is there just misconceptions that always get thrown out and it's this info's wrong and... Well, I, I I'm not necessarily sure if animosity is the right word, but I think I definitely think there's some, you know, some things being thrown over the fence on both sides of the both sides of it. Um, and it's a fair way to word that. Um, you know, I I don't again I don't have an opinion on one way or the other whether drones should be illegal, but I think overall I think drones are a tool that could be used correctly in certain situations to recover deer. Do I ever think that a drone would replace a tracking dog? Absolutely, 100% not. Um, if I have a drone in the truck and if I have a tracking dog in the truck, the dog is coming out of the truck first every single time. Kurt, your, your buck is a, a great example. A drone is not going to be able to tell me what that blood looks like on the ground, what that bed looks like, the path that that buck took. It's not tracking. You know, I can't show you the path that your that your deer took with a drone. I can find your deer, I can search, but we're not tracking with a drone, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's certain situations where a drone would be helpful. Um, you know, if if I've got you know a 200 acre CRP field and it's 85 degrees, 
I don't necessarily want to beat my dog up for four and a half hours in CRP that we can hardly walk in. But yep. if, you know, if the dog is telling me that's where the deer went, you know, okay, before I leave, even though Diesel's telling me that the deer's not dead, which he's going to absolutely do, mm-hmm. um, I sure, I might fly the drone as a, a last-ditch effort. Okay, let's just see. But yeah. I, I don't um, – there, there's too many limitations on a drone that's not on a dog. 35-mile-an-hour winds, rain, snow, the deer that's laying in the pond um, with just an antler tip sticking up. Diesel's diving in the pond. He's going to tell me that it's there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's – and then the other thing is, you know, let's get into this for a second. <clears throat> if you want to follow me for cost mm-hmm. of doing this, is as an example, um, in Missouri, the average tip that a tracker receives, a dog tracker receives, is a hundred bucks. Okay, so if you take ten tracks, you know, that's a thousand dollars from hunters coming in, right? And if I find four out of those 10, they're all dead. Mm-hmm. There are four dead deer out of 10. A dog walks to all four. The cost that hunters have spent is $250 per recovery. If I'm a drone guy and I charge an average of $400, I take the same the 10 tracks. Type, yeah. I take the same, same 10 tracks. Um, I've got $4,000. You're not going to find any more than four because we've already determined that four out of 10 are dead, right? Mm-hmm. The cost per recovery to the hunter is now a thousand bucks. So it's a drone is never going to find more deer than a dog. And a dog, almost by definition and by the limitations of the technology, is not going to find more than a dog. Dog's always going to find more deer, period. And you can't convince me otherwise. A drone is not going to find the three and a half mile deer. Can't get there. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I think a hundred percent. If I, if I had a dog and I was tracking deer, I would, I would let the dog go first and a last ditch effort, maybe pull a drone out just to double check. Yeah. And I'm not uh, bad mouthing the drone guys. I'm just saying what the reality is, is I can't, you know, I, I, I can't tell you, Kurt, you, you had a quote unquote, and I use the term loosely, a professional there who takes 100 or 125 tracks a year and a professional veteran dog that knows what a dead deer smells like and not smells like, I can turn around and tell you that I don't think the deer is dead. Diesel's telling me that he doesn't think the deer is dead. Looking at the sign, drone will never be able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So it, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. Again, I think I would have one as a tool in the toolbox. Uh, just because I got a hammer doesn't mean I'm going to drive a screw with a hammer. Right, yep. that's a great yeah. way to put yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a tool, and I'll use it. I would if it was legal in Illinois. I would use it as a tool if I thought I needed it. But at the end of the day, if Diesel is going to on your daughter's deer, if he's going to go eight minutes right to your daughter's gut shot deer, and he's going to do that to almost every deer that's dead, why do I need a drone? It's a very good point. Yeah, and I, I think I'd feel a lot better too if if he but, showed up with his dog. And they went all the way through and then flew the drone. And it's like, okay, even if they didn't fly the drone, either way, I still feel like this was a better effort put in with the dog and his nose than just depending on drone. If, if the drone didn't see it and Hey, we didn't see your deer. I, I think, I think, you know, to reiterate to that point though, I think it's important to, to, for, as a hunter, for me to tell you and for my dog to tell you, I don't think your deer is dead other than, or, or rather than I just can't find it. Mm-hmm. You know, as a hunter, you know, shot the deer, it ran that way. Yeah. Drones, I'm not a drone guy, but the, the drone is searching in that direction. Right. When the deer backtracked, when you tracked J, too early. J hooks. And now he's a mile or three quarters of a mile this way. How many batteries you're going to go through on that drone trying to find that deer? True. Right. When my dog is going to go there, going to make the big loop and start taking you and showing you blood. There he is. Bang. Deer. Mm-hmm. I, you make, I mean, really good points. I, it's like, I, I have, I mean, I agree with you. I've been, I've had experience with diesel when I see it work. I feel like you learn more with a dog. Whereas like if your deer's dead, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really have too much of opinion on the drone thing. Um, I think it's very cool. 
and very oh, interesting, oh yeah, sure. and, and they do a good job of making videos. Um, it's new and exciting technology. Mm -hmm. It gets weird with the technology part. Well, your brother-in-law, Eric, is, uh, dove into the drone thing Yep. in Iowa. Yep. Um, does he have a business with it and, and everything? He does. He just He's just getting into it. He went on a track. I was with him... Did he go through for, Mike for his like? Yep. What well, I don't know. I don't know all the terminology. So yep. Like yep. He went through Mike to get it all and all set up and everything. But yeah, he went on a track. <clears throat> actually, for a youth hunter, we did not find it, and then they called a dog in the next day, and they didn't find it. They just happened to kind of stumble upon it. Mm. Kind so of weird. No, after the dog left and after the drone left, they stumbled upon it. Well, the no, the dog was still there. The dog just didn't get on the scent, right? It was a dog in training. It was kind of one of those. But it's interesting they found hey, my, it, but the drone didn't find it with the view and the thermal. Yeah. But right. that might, here's, that's interesting. Here, here's where, and I don't... I don't I Every situation's did, weird and different from yeah. the next, so oh, it's hard. Sure. I almost didn't want to go here, but, you know... Well, here mean, we are, Gary. <laughs> there's, there's, again, things thrown on the other side of the fence, and there's a lot of trash talking coming from one direction. We're going to have a live hot debate and, here on the podcast, I feel like, between you and a drone guy. <laughs> That's okay. Um, That's okay. Uh, you know, I would, you know, I'm just... It would actually be a good conversation. Opinion, we'll, we'll hire security and get everybody in here. I, I think <laughs> I think the more... <laughs> night night. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm too old for that stuff. <laughs> um, I, I think the more you're going to see the dog drone drama play out, I think you're going to see more tracking dogs finding deer behind drones. Than you are drones finding deer behind dogs. Interesting. Yeah, I agree with that. It's already happening. Whether they want to tell you it or not, it's on these message boards that the dogs are, you know, the, the trackers are in, the dog trackers are in. It's found one behind a drone, found another one behind a drone. Hey guys, got it. So it's it's a thing, right? And I think you're going to see more of that. Again, I'm not bad mouthing the drone guy. I'm just saying they're a searching tool where a dog is a tracking tool. That's probably the you know, best way yep. to just categorize that. Like, and yeah. so these drones are just watching, looking for thermals, right? So if it's if you're not there at the right time, or the a deer cools off, like it's been dead long enough, and it cools off, like it's not going to pick it up. If it's where a dog would, if Kurt, if 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 your deer was laying in that creek up against that log jam with an antler sticking up, be tough. Diesel's going in the water. Are yeah. you going to see that with a you know? I I suppose maybe, but it's if diesel's going to walk to your deer. Why don't you let the dog walk to your deer? Yeah, yeah boot, boot, boots on the ground is what they always say. What, so. Would a drone, say a deer died in the middle of my farm, would a drone pick that up through that dense? Well, well that's, see, that's why we had a problem not finding that one with the drone because the canopy was so dense. You know, that's the other uh, thing that I've heard season. is, yep. you know, Tough. As, as feedback from, you know, the drone guys themselves, oh, it was too hot. You know, oh, there's, you know, early season vegetation is going to be a problem for us. Those are not problems for dogs. Yeah. And You're that's right. where you get into, can drones find deer? Yes. Are they better than dogs? They will never be. So if if if, you're, if your goal is to find your deer, you should put the dog down and let you find your deer. And if you don't think that the, if you think the dog sucks or your, your deer is dead and you want to keep searching, put the drone up. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I just don't see, you know, for an example, if I take 100 tracks, again, we're going to, let's go back to this. If I take 100 tracks and I find 45, if if the drone guy takes 100 tracks, he's not going to find 45 deer. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. He's not going to find the deer in the river. He's not going to find a deer at three and a half miles. It's not just him. I'm just saying drones in general. Yeah. Right? Right. It's just a tool of the drone. Yeah. Right. The thing about it is, Gary, you and, and the, uh, along the whole way, you've got a relationship with your dog. You've put in more time with your dog and getting diesel just trained up i mean you have a, a solid relationship with the, the two of you back and forth yeah. so uh, you're passionate and you believe in him and he believes in you and it's just it's a teamwork deal yep. and uh grabbing remote control on a drone it's you know a, a lot of guys can just pick one of those up and run it but hard uh, to have a relationship with a robot right doug yeah <laughs> yeah doug <laughs> 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 Nailed it. 
No, I didn't. What hey, the hell? Hey, why, did, why, hey. why do you feel attacked by that? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Kurt, that was good. That was good. <laughs> you know, solid, Kurt. And, 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 Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, and to that point, I, 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 I will address something because it was sort of pointed at me in the last <laughs> podcast. Is that, you know, you asked him on that last, pos- last podcast that said, okay, I asked Gary this question. Out of 100 deer, how many are you going to find? Gary said 45%. He said if the deer was within two to 800 yards, he's going to find them all. Okay. What about the one that's at 1150? Are you finding that one? Are you finding the one that's 30 mile an hour winds and a mile and a half that way? Are you finding that one? Can't answer that. There yeah. can't be a yes answer to that. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, it's not a, okay. If they're two to 800 yards, you're going to find them all. I doubt that. Maybe you'll find a lot of them, but I doubt that. But you're not going to find all the ones that we're going to find guaranteed 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm. I just want to okay. know what we're going to do with all the chicken feed if we don't have tracking dogs to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to the drone guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was going to say something, but I think it was going to sound racist, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like how I still air out my thoughts? Oh, <laughs> gee whiz. Yeah, good thing you thought about that yeah. one. And good thing <laughs> I can't control my thoughts, kind of. <laughs> and, and Kurt, this is the last thing I, you know, I, just, I want to say about it is this. There, there's, I don't want to create animosity between the dogs and the drones. That's not what this is about. Well, you did a pretty good job of it, Gary. I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm just, it, it's the reality, no matter what yeah. the marketing is on either side, it's the reality of what we're dealing with. No, and, so, that, and, and that's fair. And, I, and Gary, I want to say this too. We don't want to be the middle ground between the dog guys and the drones. Right. Because that's, I feel maybe we've already kind of been there not knowing because we've had the dog guy and the drone guy on and now we got the dog guy on again and we want to do another one with the drone guy and maybe we just need to have a committee podcast sure. and have some fun with that sure um i definitely don't want to be the middle ground between the two where it's like for sure uh, here goes working class guys stirring shit up with the deer recovery yeah, curse, in the pot. You know? Um, them damn boys. I think what is captivating and fun for us is it's interesting. Sure. And there's always a question mark in the result or in the search for what the, of the recovery. Mm-hmm. So that's the fun part about deer tracks. That's why I've always said without a dog or a drone, the more you can go on, just like with a dog or a drone, mm-hmm. the more you learn, the more you got in the bag for the next one. And you might be able to help your buddy or whoever with some advice. So it's tough. But it's fun because there's never there's there's never a one thousand percent definitive. This is like yeah. it, what happened exactly, or it's kind of like the private versus public fucking thing. It, it, yeah, it's, almost. It's knocking on that door. It is. It's knocking on the door of. And I hope you don't take this the wrong way, or the drone guys don't take this the wrong way. It's knocking on the door of like the conversation of. Who's the greatest of all time? Right. Because right. everyone's going to have their strong opinion and you'll never skew them over the fence where like... It's either go one way or the other or there's going to be those people in the middle that really don't give a shit. Or, or which way. The, you, we might do 10 years of study and results and research and one might shine over the other, but you're still going to have your guys that choose to ignore the results. Here's right. what I think is important for you guys is because you reach the hunting public. I think the majority... I think there's a, a, a portion of the hunters that believe because a drone person, a drone search team is charging four or $500 to come out and find your deer is that they're better than a dog. And the reality is, is they're not, but they're being told in certain and uncertain ways that they are. So from a hunter perspective, if I have a choice between a dog and a drone, I think it's important for you guys to point out here are the positives of a drone here's the negatives of a drone here's the positives of dog and negative of dog you find which tool you want to use um i don't think there needs to be any argument about it but you know both sides need to act like an adult if if this is going to be discussed um and i think we need to start dealing in facts instead of opinion and marketing yeah just like in politics if you want to know what's what the issue is follow the money yeah. Mm-hmm. Why are we, you know, I track because I love to find deer with my dog. I don't track for the money. Um, I have to have tip money to be able to travel all over the, the Midwest doing what I do. So when somebody charges you quite a bit of money, 
you have to start questioning, are they really in it? For, are they in it for them or are they in it for you? Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not saying everybody that does that is that way. I'm just saying, you know, I, I, what did I charge you? Nothing. I, I said, what do I owe you? You're like, yeah, basically pay for my gas. Yeah. Pay for my gas. I, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm there because I want to find your deer and I'm there because I want to spend time with my dog. You know, you would have, you would have had the same end result on that track and you would have been $500 in a hole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you make a strong point with like the marketing part of it, because there is a very, with the drone thing, one, one thing I'll take away, and it's not a bad thing. I, I kind of, I get it with technology, there comes cost. Mm -hmm. And when it comes with something new cutting edge and the game of deer hunting, which I feel like that might be the, yeah, I mean, unless I'm forgetting something or missing something, the drone thing to deer hunting is kind of like the new uh, shock value thing a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. oh, shit, drones? I, I, drones oh, are kind of sure. that that thing anyway. Drones, it's like, dude, if you would have told us about drones in 98, you know, you've been yeah, like, like oh, you work fucking, for the fucking military or yeah, what? it's witchcraft, right. you know, Obama's right. killing everybody with drones and whatever. <laughs> that was a fucking one of my things I do and I don't think about it before I say it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's got the shock value. It's got the new technology. There's the marketing cool. to it. It's, it's cool. cool yeah. You know, oh, yeah, um, it's cool. And I've, I've watched some of the videos and that's badass. They're it's cool. cool when it works. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, Let's get off it until somebody gets us back on it. <laughs> Next question. Before I just say a bunch of like blatantly dumb shit and everyone's like, that guy is fucking an idiot. Yeah, I am. Welcome to the show. Um, all right. Well, that guy knows too much. Uh, what do you, <laughs> how often are, how often are deer actually hit very well, but go much further than you would have expected? That's a good question. A lot of them. Kaler? A, a lot of them. A lot of them. You know, here's a here's a funny scenario. I'll try to keep this short. 20-year-old um, um, I tracked for a couple of weeks ago, shot his very first deer, ended up being a button buck. Um, I don't want anybody's opinion on what somebody else shot, so don't yeah, give me a hard right. time about somebody shooting a fawn. Um, but, you know, so make a long story short, he drilled – this button buck gut liver lung and the exit was under the armpit on the outside smoked yeah at that quartering way we found it at 1400 yards 11 hours later with his head up God, what? Still alive. If you don't get both lungs or a heart it's almost i mean they're just, they're so damn they problem. can just be resilient it's incredible and, like, and that's a fawn not a six and a half year old buck in the right. middle of the wow. not a big bodied right. deer what yeah. you think you just get an arrow in it well, that's what i mean the scary. if i take one of them shots i'm going six inches i'm dead oh humans are we're, we suck oh, oh yeah. we suck oh yeah we 100 percent yeah Here, Gary, by the way give me a beer do you see any uh difference you in look in water hole you find mixed blade Yes, and it's always going to be a controversy because the hunting community likes mechanicals and the tracking community does not. Um, I you hear you got a phone going off. No, I'm sorry, guys. No, is that no, you? Good. It's all good. <laughs> um, thought I heard something. It's not um, like we're live, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never coming back. Um, yeah, um, our interns' arms are giving out over there. We this is uh, the ultimate test. <laughs> we find better results with more penetration value of a fixed head versus a mechanical. I would rather have two smaller holes in a fixed head than one big hole in a mechanical. Mechanicals tend not to be as resilient as a fixed head. Um, if, you know, if I've got an arrow in the in guts or intestines of a big buck, I would probably want it to be a mechanical. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I want penetration value. I don't want eight inches when I can get 16 with right. out, of a, out of a fixed head fixed heads tend to stay together better we just you know i'm a i was a fixed head guy you know i told you last time i shot slick tricks even before they were on the market and i i shot a lot of deer with slick tricks and um i just and we don't see the we don't see the um the um deflective value out of a fixed head that we do a mechanical mm -hmm. you know they in select situations, I'll, I'll take a mechanical, but overall, I'm on a fixed head. If you're aiming six inches off the shoulder to the shoulder, you want that fixed head for sure. But I like how you said that, you know, if you're back. So I shot a mechanical. I shot my doe with a mechanical. That's the first year. I don't know. Two years. I've been shooting fixed heads mostly. 
and I I had some deflection. I think somehow I went in lung and came out gut. And I was like, how d- yeah. did that happen? But I will tell you, on the exit, everything it ripped through on the exit was out of the exit hole. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can see why she went 25 feet. Like yeah. all the organs were out yeah. of the exit <laughs> They were all out. Yeah. It was you not uh, Facebook worthy. <laughs> on the <laughs> <exit>. <laughs> yeah, TikTok would have banned me. Yeah. Um, Okay, this is a good question here. Uh, Jaron Johnson, 07. What happens if the hunter leads you on a property and doesn't have permission on it and you get pinned for it? No, it's my it's my problem. Yeah, really? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think the DNR is going to look at the the overall situation and you know, are we going to get ticketed? We could. I mean, we're we can't go anywhere you can't go, and you can't give me permission to go where you don't have permission, you yeah. know, to give me to go. So. If I'm trespassing with you, yeah, we're both getting tickets. If the DNR, or the state cop or county cop wants to give us one, yeah, we're both getting tickets. Everybody's trespassing, they're trespassing, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I can turn to the officer and said, hey, I asked him at the truck or I asked him at the fence, Kurt, you said we can go over the fence, didn't you? Yeah, I thought we could. You know, I don't... I well, you think. told me we could before we got going. Now I never yeah. said my Mister Green Jeans is here, and you're uh, right. So you're, you're backing out on. Can me. we go over the fence? Yeah, but I'm going to stay over here. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I'll you want. and your dog go over there. At the end of the day, it's 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 like speeding. Well, I didn't see the sign. Okay, well you're still speeding. Yeah, tell yeah. Me. yeah that's yeah. true. You know, yeah, that's it's fair. it's our responsibility to know the property lines and you know just to, to stay where we need to be. Definitely. And and by the way, Jaron Johnson's. Uh, I've tracked for that kid before. He's a young kid, taught taught himself how to bow hunt. And I'm telling you what, you wait till that kid's 30 or 40 years old. He's going to be a deer killing machine. Oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a good dude. Sounds like we need to get him Shout on the podcast. Yep. Okay, we got some jo- a lot of joins going on. Okay, let's go to Facebook. <laughs> uh, wait, there's one there. When is it too late to call a oh. tracker? After you've grid searched, <laughs> you know, for three days with your buddies and you want to, you know, the, the dog is a last ditch effort. I mean, it's then it's not too late, but in terms of time, I don't know. We tracked to a deer last year at 51 hours and he tracked to it like it was 20 hours old. Really? Really? Um, nice. Hmm. But, you know, that's not going to happen all the time, but, right. you know, there's there's been deer hoof track that in the 70s confirmed 70 hours. Wow. But, you know, generally, if you know things are bad, contact your tracker ASAP rather than later. That's it's better for everybody that way i'm trying to go back i've not been on facebook because we've been just going through the instagram oh questions. Boy, we got a lot don't we? um a lot of these are old um uh, we'll scroll through a lot i guess a lot of the questions we're answering well i don't think i'm seeing live comments on this i wonder if i'll hit the refresh those are those were live weren't they it wanted me to do something to see the live comments. Right there, 40 comments. Oh. Yeah, those are live. Oh, it, said, it said right here, send this stars to see your comments here. I can read them. Yeah, but those are all. What's the last one you see? Does it say watch or the asterisk? Yeah. Okay. Then we're, I guess, we're yeah. good. Um, yeah, a lot of people join in, in and out on Instagram. I, I like all your breakdowns because I, I really don't feel, Gary, I mean, I know you now, obviously, but I feel like people listening aren't going to, I don't feel like they don't catch the vibe that you're trying to like skew an opinion one way or another. But like, I feel like when you're talking and explaining things, it's just, this is what it is. And that's all I can give you, you know? So, and that's what makes me feel comforted about like having you come out for a track. Like we had a track two days ago that was unsuccessful because there was no success to be found in it in general. Yeah. Right. Is, you know, it's like, I think it's important for me to convey to the hunter what I'm truly thinking. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm not trying to blow smoke up you. I'm not trying to make my dog look great or I just want to give you the truth. And and at the end of the day, I want to drive away and have the guys talking at the truck when, after I drive away and say, you know what? He was real with us. Yeah, he that was, was worth it. That was yeah. worth you know, it. at least he was honest. I mean, if anything, I'm going to be honest with you. And if I don't think your deer's dead, I'm going to tell you. And if I think Diesel's having a bad day, I'm going to tell you. And if I think I, your, your deer's dead and I can't find it, I'm going to tell you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's the only thing I can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's I, fair. 
the dog woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. You know, I've got a decent reputation in the tracking community with hunters, and I, I think that's a large part of it because, you know, I think most people recognize that, you know, I'm genuine and honest, and I'm I'm there to find your deer. And I want to find your – I wanted to find your deer as much as you did the other, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it's, you don't want to come out and not find it. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, how it's weird would that suck. be, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's like, here, let me beat my dog down and beat myself down, and then, yeah, I'll just – collect your tip money which is not probably i think what it should be and then leave it's like yeah leave all, really add leave all happy yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah thanks no. bro uh no dude i appreciate what you do uh for the deer hunting community and really i from what i've seen and experienced with you and hung out with you and have hours of conversation with you now at this point i really feel like you are the guy and you're trustworthy and i love you and i love diesel and i think we all do here at the table and we appreciate the hell out of you man we appreciate you. you coming on again to do this with thank us. you and I, I think it's important for me to say too that you know and we said it at dinner you know okay on this podcast i do represent sort of the tracking community there's a lot of teams out there that are busting their ass work hard with their dog do the right thing tell the hunters the truth there's a lot of people out there the exact same way in my shoes. I'm just, I'm the guy that's lucky enough or blessed enough to be here to re represent the rest of those guys. So it's right not just on. me. There's there's yeah. a lot of other teams out there that are jam up dudes. <laughs> not just you and Diesel. Well, jam up teams. And, <laughs> yeah. and and it's not just guys. There's there's tracking teams, you know, male, female, both. And they're both working hard and they care just as much as we do. Yeah. So it's not just me. It's not Seems like a cool. Um, I don't. I, I say this in good, but there's like subcultures in each niche, and it's yeah. just a cool community. It seems like. Seems like. You know, um, yeah. for I don't know much. I don't know dogs. I don't know the community. I know the community through you, and I know a little bit about the drone community from from Mike. But like, right. um, oh, I have a question. Take it away. So then. when do you get to hunt? Yeah, Rare. good question. <laughs> Rarely, like second shotgun season, I'll get out. Um, I don't know. Wow, four days, huh? Well, norm, you know, <laughs> I just, you we, don't, we don't get many calls. But you know, if I get a call, I'm I'm out of the tree. I'm gone. Um, Are you really? You'll cut a, sh a hunt short. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, if I got to, you know, I don't know if I got into this on the last podcast, but it was funny. It, it's funny because I got to give my wife a little shit. Um, I never hunt, and last two two Novembers ago. Um, I had two tracks in the morning. I had one scheduled at night to your question, Doug. And I said, I am sick of talking to hunters. I'm sick of my phone ringing. I'm going to the tree stand. I'm going to shut my phone off. And literally, I got in the tree stand. I told her where I was, returned to hunter's text. I shut my phone off. I put it in my pocket and hung the bow up. And I looked to my right, and here he comes, 186. No oh, way. Wow. I wasn't in a tree 30 seconds. I turned my phone back on and I said, I just shot one. And she goes, <laughs> Holy get shit. out. Nice. Do I need to bring diesel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yes, I needed diesel. Yep. You oh. did. I did. But you got, he was going to show up That's like way. just good karma building up. Yeah, no joke. <sighs> it's not, I did not want to use him. Well, I mean, like good karma, the deer came in so like. You just hunted once and awesome. Yeah, it's a just, 186. So shit. lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So lucky. <laughs> no, but it's karma. Sh I shot the deer square in the liver. Square in the liver. I think you did tell that story. Yeah, because, yeah. Cause, yeah yep. I think you did, but. 150 yards later, 16 hours later. Yeah, you he, did tell he that. Picked so you his, waited? Picked his head up in that bed. No kidding. Diesel walked right up to him and started pulling hair, and his head came up, and I went, oh, uh -oh. no. <laughs> Rut row. 16 hours later, hit him square in the liver. Alive. Dang. It's amazing. What was the date? Wow. November 7th. There you go. Yep. Full, it's the rut. full of adrenaline. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, that's what it is probably, huh? Yep. Just like. it's. I explain it to hunters like, you know, you, see, you ever see those guys that are that are high on crack? And there's, there's <laughs> I've like. Seen, I've seen a couple. That's a great way <laughs> yeah. to put it. No, there's like eight cops on there's them trying tased to get, get yeah, yeah, handcuffs on them. Tasered on taser. That's a taser. buck in the rut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, I've never you're heard just that so horny yeah, I've never heard you can that. take your yeah. liver out. <laughs> if there's one thing, if there's one thing, stay horny, my friends. <laughs> if you're gonna fight, get horny. Dude, you <laughs> won't die. Yeah, you just get stabbed in a street fight in downtown Chicago. You're there on a bachelor party. If you're horny, you're living. You go for a while. <laughs> hey, take a Viagra before you're fighting. <laughs> Dude, that's cra it is crazy to think that like how re oh, we're joking, but like how resilient. Just They're amazing. 16 hours. They're amazing. Yep. It's not fair. What do they say on a liver normally? Seven, eight, or is it like a, tw is that eight, a 12 hour? Eight thing? to 12, I eight like. Eight to 12. 
this time of year, and I much prefer 12. Isn't the liver, talking about deer anatomy, it's not that big of an area, right? No. It's, it's just a like a small inch. sliver, ain't it? Yeah. yeah, you've got lungs, and then you've got that yeah. angle of liver. <laughs> And then you've got stomach and because the liver kind of wraps the rest of the. It's like a. It's mm-hmm. an organ that kind of wraps before the it. diaphragm. Yeah, yep. yep. Kills it's like in between the the diaphragm and the gut. So. Yep. And liver sits lower. It's 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 actually, I've got a really good picture I'll share with you. It actually goes from the almost to the under the spine to all the way on the bottom. Oh, oh, really? So it it is stretched out in the picture I got, and I can show you. It's 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 long. I mean, it's, it is like, it's a long one. I was under the impression it was like lower half and, and kind of low end. But. As long as you're under the spine, you're you're getting in the goods. Okay. You know. In the dead zone area, that's a, a big debate. I don't believe in the dead zone, but I do believe in the scapula. And I think that's what most people, <laughs> but I really believe in the scapula. <laughs> and I think most people mistake the scapula for the dead zone. And that that's one thing I saw. Do you not agree with that statement? Mm-mm. No, I th- I think there's I think there's a thought that there's space under the spine before the lungs start that you, you can you can get yeah. an arrow in that there is no plural space. See, there. Everyone calls that the dead zone. No, yeah. I, it's the scapula. They're hitting the scapula. No, I think they're over the spine. Yeah. We talked about this last time. You, you called it a nick, but the off the vertebrae there's vertical sp- there's vertical fins that come off the vertebrae. That's where the back straps. Sit. Oh yeah, yeah. So when yeah. you take off the back back straps of a deer, it's that bone you're cutting in. Yeah. That's that's but, the spinal fins. Right, and a lot of guys will here. go through that, and you they don't think, realize how thick their hair is either. Right. I and mean, there's a couple inches on top. See, I but I uh, all right. Let's I, for sake of fun here. Let's let's uh, we're on deer cast. Yep. So there you go. All that, be this. all that space above that gray, that's all, to me, that's no man's land. This up here? You just ruined somebody's stakes is all Back you did. Straps. See, I feel like when most people say, I hit them in no man's land, mm-hmm. I feel like they're talking in here. There is no plural space below the spine and above the lungs. Yeah, that's what I, I'm, I agree with so you. So hitting above the spine. I, but I, I feel when people say I hit them in that dead zone, I feel like they're referring to this space. Yeah. But I feel like what they're doing, they're hitting the deer in the in the scapula. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I think I think in no man's land is that spine right there, that little gray area. I this? I think the spine over this. Right above the liver. This yeah down it, all along that spine right, right above there it. that's no man's land this in my was always that's in the my spine yeah, but that's, that's the spine but you hit yeah. the deer there so, he folds like a like a chiropractor hit him yeah. right. he didn't go yeah. anywhere <laughs> and I I've shot a deer there before and I thought it was no man's land I got blood I got everything but I was evidently between those fins like you're saying yep. Gary and right generally what we see with spine hits or sorry not spine hits but um, hits above the spine into the back straps you're gonna have Real bright muscle blood. Depending on the fat that around the back straps, you might have a little smear of white on the yep. arrow. If it's going to feel a little greasy, you may even have a little pieces of meat on the on the mm, veins. I had all that. Um, it, that's almost always. I shouldn't say always. That points to back straps a lot. Okay. Okay. So I guess what I consider when, and maybe my wording is wrong in this because every time I talk about this, people argue with me. <laughs> I feel like most people are like the dead zone. I'm like you're hitting the scapula, you're hitting a deer in the shoulder, and I think people think the shoulder is here. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's a misconception. Yeah. People think when you go to shoot for the heart that the crease, which this is the crease, the leg bone. Mm-hmm. I feel like most people think that's the shoulder, but it's here. It's yeah. the scapula. Yep. I feel like I when I explain it, I'm maybe not as direct in my words. But that, like, uh, um, what's the, uh, is it QDMA did a, uh, like, a diagram with, a like, a live, mm-hmm. like, biology class. You know what I'm talking about, the yep, video? I saw it. But, and what I loved, I loved the video, but what I hated about it when they did it, they didn't have the scapula there. Yep. And I'm like, the scapula is what everyone's calling no man's land. That's the, yeah. the scapula. Yeah. You're and that is the technical shoulder. I can it's tell a you right steel now, plate of no penetration is what it is. Right? I can tell you right now, when yeah. I shoot a deer, I'm nine o'clock on those crosshairs every time. The very tip of that red line. Yep. Yeah. You're you know, there. So just just a hair to the right. There you go. So right here's there. a good point. 
you, you have, and, and to your point, Ross, if most guys are back of the leg straight up in the middle. So, Kurt, go to the back of the leg and go straight up in the middle. No, oh, back of the front leg. Oh. I'm like, where are we going? Okay, um, right Here? there. Texas hard shot. So that's that's generally where right in the hands. That's generally where people are taught to aim, right? Yeah. Most of the time. Yep. You have zero margin of error. Yep. Less margin of error all the way to your right. You've got scapula, bone. If you miss three inches right, you're you're done. You're done. It, it's yeah. a bad day. Yep. Now, just like you said, Ross, if if I'm aiming at the center of the back of the lungs, yep. I have a bigger margin of error. Everything to the left is dead, and I've got eight or ten inches to the right that's dead. You're either watching them drop or you're letting them sit overnight. Yep. Back I'm long. I'm not. Hang on, let me say this. I am <laughs> not pr promoting of guy shooting purposely a liver or stomach shot deer. I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying. Hey, the coyotes are hungry, too. <laughs> get in the back. <laughs> I got to eat, too. Hey, Ross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get, get in the back of the lungs. Punch a hole in the back of the lungs. Have a good day. But if you're four inches to the right, you still smoked them. If you're if you're eight inches to the left, he's still going to die. And you 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 know it's, it's a, a findable deer. You ever heard yeah. of people actually take his heart shot? I'm shooting in the ham. Yeah, and I, that's not. It's a bad play. I don't think I, we need to go there. Yeah, you I know, just heard people used to do it back in the. You day. know what's even worse is With that a rifle that maybe. frontal shot. That frontal. Oh, the frontal from a tree stand or or ground blind. It has horrible results. The, the odds of recovery on that deer are slim. Unless you're Michael really? Waddell. If you get it through that hole, you're, you're going to take out everything above the heart and probably both lungs and guts and however much you can, right? That's a great shot, but it's the size of an apple. Do most mm -hmm. people aim and hit them in the brisket bone? Yep. They think it's lower than what they it is? They think it's lower, yeah. Here's like, the it, other, like they did the elk. Yeah. Animals. yeah. Here's the other thing to think about. The front of a deer's chest, the rib bones come they wrap around the front point yep. if you look at those rib bones right the next deer cage you find in the woods pick it up and look at it from the front it's a wall of bone mm -hmm. and it's curved and it tends to ricochet put those arrows out to the side that never penetrate the body cavity mm -hmm. and we see it a lot no kidding you know, yeah. we, we get that frontal shot and the guys can't find it on their own the odds of us finding it are very small yeah it's either one or the other right yep Either it's like find them thirty yards, or it's like neck hits. It's not your fun. If you're not going to find that neck hit deer, if you didn't hit the jugular or the esophagus, and it's going to choke itself to death, those odds of us finding it are slim too. That's mm. no man's land. Oh yeah, a whole lot bad. of no man's land in there. Yeah, it's a uh... hit our next word. Okay, all right, right here. There's a uh, comment here. Been outside. No man's land is not hitting the bone. It's passed through without touching the vitals. You can't. Can't. You cannot be below the spine and not touch vitals. That's my thing. You're hitting the scapula. The only nine non-vital pass through is through the back straps. Yep. I agree with that. That's what I mean. Like, no offense, been outside, but you're get. I just. That's not right. You're above yeah. the spine. Yeah, You're above right. the spine. There ain't yeah. no vitals up there. No, there's no biologist that's going to tell you that you can put a inch and a half broadhead through the actual body cavity of a deer and have it not hit anything vital because you will. Yeah. Um. Let me see. But I've 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 been there, seen that, and yeah. no, like <laughs> we didn't recover that deer. Yeah. But had blood and had the fat on the yep. arrow, and yeah, yep. I just. And if you've got a lot of fat on the arrow. Like there's there's a big white greasy streak down that arrow. It's most likely brisket because you've got that mm -hmm. one inch layer mm -hmm. of fat down there, and that's yeah yeah that's really indicative of, of brisket. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that like that comment there is kind of like it's like wow it's there yeah you really can't pass below the spine and not hit cavity right. right. Unless you, if unless if you're you hit the shoulder if you're above the spine and we ain't never gonna find it if you're below the spine we've got a lot of chances to good find chance it. yeah. It will be the debate that will forever be the debate, no matter what biology tells us. I don't and, think it's. Uh, I don't think it's semantics. I, I don't think it's debate. It's just semantics. It's what. It's what you think it means. What you think right. you saw. You know what it does, Gary? It keeps us in business. There you go, man. <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey. Job security. And it keeps you in business. <laughs> Job right. security, bro. Yep. It keeps us all in business. It's yep. a. It's a great conversation. I feel like it's a, a probably a needed yearly conversation to keep 100%. everybody updated on it. Do you ever um, have like quick uh, <laughs> quick whiffs like you like backstrap because you just hit it? 
and we ain't fucked. Yeah, <laughs> just roasting them. Yeah, just roasting them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a roast. That's, that's Diesel's job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Remember? The wild thing is, is that that backbone is lower than you think it is. Way lower. When you're looking at the deer's back and, and you know, and the horizon or whatever, the sunset, you think, Poof, oh, I shot a little high. Yeah. Well, I should have spined him. I must have been below and just hit no man's land. That's yep. what I've always thought. Yep. But realistically, that backbone is way lower than you think. And there's a lot of meat sitting up there. You bet. Mm -hmm. And the as the spine comes towards the shoulder, it dips, it dips. way down. Mm, there's yeah. a ton of space up there and you shoot a five and a half six and a half year old buck i don't know if this is accurate you might have eight inches above that yeah yeah where that spine dips down and goes into the that's neck. crazy to think about i want to spine follows a belly. next buck one of us kills and we got to skin it out and take some pictures stand it up and just oh, like, blow the lungs up and i can show you straight up take it to the lab yeah we, we've we've i've done that i can show you the pictures it's amazing okay we're gonna need those pictures because yeah. now what's experiment? We get attacked. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're a freak. <laughs> well, dude, what did we miss, Gary? What did we miss this time? I mean, if we miss something, you just gotta come back. That's a deal. But yeah. I'd rather come back. No, I'm just <laughs> hey, you know what? Fuck you. I'm coming back. Hey, fuck you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I could talk all day, and you know, I th I think one of the things that that hunters, if I can encourage any hunter, if you want to be a better hunter, learn the anatomy of a deer, learn how to read an arrow. L learn what liver blood looks like. Learn what lung blood looks like. What does your arrow smell like when you run run through the guts versus the intestines? Is that muscle blood I'm looking at or is that lung blood I'm looking at? That's the way to become a better hunter overall and you're going to put more deer in your freezer and on your wall if you're a student of the game after the shot as much as you are before. Love it. Love it. So you, you know. even, even if you hear them crash. And you think they're deader than a hammer. Yeah, still, not, still, not, still go on that go blood trail. Approach that arrow like yeah. he's not dead. It's mm -hmm. a crime scene. Yep. Treat it as such. Yep. That's right. You know, if you're gonna track with your buddies, don't walk down the don't walk down the line. Start a GPS, start, start a tracking app. Mark blood. Mm -hmm. Mark the hit site. Mark last blood. Mm -hmm. Don't crisscross in the woods when you're doing it. You know, it's it's all those things that may not matter when you find it, but it may matter when what the hell's going on here? Mm-hmm. Now you call a dog in and oh, where's the hit site? Oh, I don't know. Where's last blood? Well, we marked it with a stick. Okay, well, there's a lot of sticks laying around. <laughs> yeah. Diesel's carrying one of them. <laughs> you know, so you know, just be smart about it. Be a, be a student after the shot as much as you are before. It's okay. going to lead to more, more dead deer. Well, we appreciate it, man. Where can people find you? Diesel the deer tracking dog on Facebook, and uh, I'm on Instagram too. Cool. We'll link them both in the episode description. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, dude. Thanks for Appreciate coming. all your hard Thanks work. Thanks for having me. You boys got anything to throw in the mix here? No, I love when you come in, but uh, I hope I never have to call you. Hit me too. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, call Diesel out. That's oh, right. Oh, there it is. T-shirts. I like it. Bumper sticker. I, like I like it. Ross, good to see your face. Yeah, nice to be here. I've had fun. We're getting Come double on. dose of Ross this week. We it's got a, a deer cast. We got Ross right here. Beard looks just as good as I remember. Oh, I what? shaved. I shaved it off earlier this I summer. Saw I, 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 stayed, I went to I his house and I'm like, I'm were. like, what in the fuck did you do? <laughs> who are you? What'd you do with Ross? Yeah, it's an imposter. <laughs> no, nah, it's full gun on him. <laughs> no, nah, it's fun. Fun being here, guys. It's been a long time. So, hey, why don't you come around like the next few weeks in a row? Huh? I plan to. You what? do? It's well, it is a season. You know, deer hunting. All my work's getting. Aren't you on track for another two hundred incher? Oh. Every working on that. What do you mean another? <laughs> We're working on that. Ross has killed three 200 inchers. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, a boss. what a stud. Was yeah. it was it every five years? Uh yeah, five. One two hundred every five years. Wow. What are we at now? How four, many years? Four or five. Three. Three years in? Three. Yeah. Three. We're getting close. Yeah. How, how, how many how many people in the United States have killed three over two hundred? We with talked a, about with this. A bow. Uh there's not many who have four. Just one with us. a gun. One with a gun. Yep. We we've we've talked. I, I don't. I think you're the youngest that has three that we know about. Um, Josh Bomar might be close to our <laughs> age, but we got to talk yeah. to that guy and see what his story is. But I'd um, have him in here versus me. Stan Potts has what four or five? What do he say on the podcast? I think I think he's got four, four or five. Four. Jury's got Mark's got two, three or four. Two, oh, three. I think he's got three. Adam Hayes has got four. Three, he's four or five. That's okay. that's a deer killing stud. Yeah, there. he's yeah a yeah. Um, 
I mean, she, there's a bunch we'll miss. We, we're going to try and name them all off. What we got? Spooks Band. Oh. Yeah, Spooks Band's got us all beat, I think. You got like 50. Mitch Rampola's got a few, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got them all in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> he's killed everyone that came out of Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, okay. I know what I'm bringing up next episode, you're on. <laughs> um, that deer I found on Sunday was was over to 17. kid was 17 years old. His first buck with a bow. Oh, wow. Yeah, and probably 230 inch deer. Oh, holy right. cow. 17. Eesh. <sighs> Shout out to that kid. Shout out to him. Yeah. I need to get him in here and he did great. Good him job, teach bud. us things. That's cool. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Get, we'll have to get that kid in. If you can hook that up. I'll that'd be tell fun. you what. He's, he's tagged out. What the fuck? You, <sighs> what was that reaction like? Um, I, I recovered that deer on my own. They were back home in Wisconsin. Um, they ran out of blood the night before. They went back home, and then they started calling for trackers and just got me. So I went in and found a deer by myself. Wow. Just dropped, they dropped they went, yeah. oh, For real? They dropped you like a pen? Yeah. They went home? Yeah. They ran out of blood, and they had to get back to the farm. They were cutting corn, and they had to get out. And you, and you called and told them you found it? Yep. I called the kid over the deer. Are you a, kidding? And no, it was the greatest freaking phone call ever, man. Holy I would I would want to make that phone call every day. Well, hold on, hold on. I didn't know that. All right, so he just sent you a pin like, hey, there's last blood. Yeah, I met the landowner, um, and I said, okay, where can I park, and where's the ground blind at? And he's pointing with me on the phone, and I parked my truck, and I'm like, okay, the ground blind's got to be up there. And I didn't know where the deer was standing. And, you know, so anyway, I start diesel, and we find the deer, and just diesel just tore this track up. I mean, it was it was great. I'm not bragging on my dog. I'm just saying it was, it was locked on, and we were just going to the deer. So anyway. That's cool. And, you know, I, I don't know if, if people have seen the pictures of this deer. I've never seen a deer this size dead before in my life in person, right? Um, and as Diesel was approaching this deer, I think my jaw, my mouth was open. I was like, holy cow. I mean, it's just laying there. He's like 30 inches inside. Holy I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just like, Dang. holy shit, what am I looking at? And as soon as I calmed down and my wife caught up with me and we, we just sat on this log and we looked at this deer and went, that's not real. <laughs> I, I just huh. unbelievable. With, huh. So anyway, I, I said, Oh, I get to make this phone call. That is, that is pretty cool. I get on the phone. I said, Hey, Curtis, guess where I'm at? Good name. And he goes, did you find my deer? I'm like, I'm standing over your buck. Dude. Could you imagine him looking at his phone though? And he goes, this is going to go one way or the other. Yep. I, yeah. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Black I, don't, or red. I don't want to embarrass the kid, but he's, you could tell he was just, he was crying. Oh, I mean, he was so, my damn eyes out. He was so freaking happy, dude. And I was like, this is why we track yeah, right here. There you go. This man. is awesome. But you know what? It was really tough. And I'm telling you, it was tougher than what I even thought. I had to walk away from that deer because Illinois, I can't touch that deer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can touch it. I can't move it. I can't gut it for him. I can't you can't you know, do anything. pull it, it out, out for him. I can't do anything. I have to leave it. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm leaning a 200. I'm just walking away from a 230. I'm just leaving it sit there. And a deer might even be bigger than that. I don't know. Do you like wow. leave something on it wow. so coyotes wouldn't get it until they can? No. Get it? So what they do, just leave and come get it right away? Yeah, I left. I, I dropped a pin and, or I told them where it was at. I tried to drop a pin and I couldn't. And I just told them where it was at and they retrieved it. They hoofed it down. Oh, okay. oh, I bet you they left right away. Oh, you got him. Yeah, yeah. probably the combine full grain. I car. wouldn't even shut the combine yeah. off. I'd be jumping in the truck. Dude, they just put the gleaner on auto track and left it. <laughs> <laughs> it just left it to die like yeah. all the other ones. I was like, this like, sucks anyway. <laughs> Come get it tomorrow. I got I got 20 yards or 30 yards away from that deer, and I stopped and looked back. My wife goes, what are you doing? I'm like, you'll never see that sight ever again. No. Yeah. no. Did you um, yeah. know how big it was before? Yeah, he called you. Unfortunately, like before you started unfortunately, the track. Yeah. did he have trail cam pictures of it or something? Well, I already committed to the track. I was down the highway, and I called Curtis one more time because I had a couple of questions that I thought of. And he goes, "Well, you just want me to send you a picture?" I'm like, "Sure." I'm like, "Oh, I don't know. It's just another deer, right?" And I open it up and I went, Come on. <laughs> "This is not a deer. <laughs> Holy it's an fuck. elk!" My wife looked at me and she goes, "What?" And she goes, "What is it? Like a hundred inch deer?" And I'm like, "I show it to her," and she goes, "Holy." I'm like, wow, things yep. just got real. Wow. And it was velvet, too, because so you know, it, oh, it looks yeah. twice as big as it. Yeah, you know, that's right. But, <laughs> oh, damn. Man, if he wouldn't that's send cool. you a picture and you just walked up on it, not knowing. Oh, holy shit. I would have told I you think, it was a two-year-old just to see. I think <laughs> I would have had a stroke. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's cool. I it's didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. Bad. So it's they cool. just, like, paused everything, came down and got it. I'm sure tagged it up, had a party, yep. and drove back. Yep. And they, w when I called them the next day, um, that kid was back in the combine the next day with no sleep. 
Nice. I, yeah, shout out to that kid. Had a grind. Yeah. Yep. I'd be grind. hitting every tavern on the way home. He's 17, <laughs> Eric. He's, well, <laughs> Wisconsin. Well, in Wisconsin, yeah, you can. You're with your dad. You yeah, yeah, in Wisconsin, dad. you can. Once you hit the border, you That's can. right, isn't it? If you're in Wisconsin, yeah. you're drinking with your old man. That's what I've always heard. I, got I don't 14. know. If that's... Hard working farm kid. Let that kid drink Back with your old Good, good for him. Good for him. Very cool. That's a good story. Oh, it's awesome. And I may or may not have the track on video, but I'm just saying. Well, we'll, we'll show, we'll show <laughs> that off. Released. Hey, show us off air. <laughs> yeah, show us off air. Um, secret footage. But Doug will put it on his OnlyFans. Got to pay to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's OnlyFans is just big bucks. It's just big. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good OnlyFans. That's that's some racks. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> hey, can't have sex with robots, right, Doug? Oh boy. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <not yet. laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> well, let's get the hell out of here. Thank you so much, Gary. You're welcome, brother. Thanks, Thank Gary. you. Anybody want to throw anything in? We we're, were in the middle of doing that, and we got on another story. Nope. I think we're at Todd at this point. Anything? No, just appreciate everything you've done, and uh, glad to have the connection. And Thanks, hope we brother. don't need you, but uh, I hope I see. No, every... you're there if we do. Yep. Yep. I'll be. I'll sure. be there. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Yep. Cool. Eric, you got anything? Nope. I already said my piece. Okay. This is a turning point of everybody's season. Let's kill some bucks. We got cold fronts coming up, like the day of launch. You know, if yeah. you're listening on the live, it's next week. But they have launch on the way to like hunting today. But Wheeler Walker Junior is coming in town apparently, so we might have to hunt what we can. Yeah, get put our shit kickers stand. on and get out there. That's a tough one on a cold right. front. Kurt. You know that. Kurt. I'm gonna. We're, I'm gonna be there. So you, I'm gonna. You go. gotta go. Shout out to your intern you go who, to. who's been in that position for That's two no hours. Kidding. He's I, earning it. His 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 uh, arms are numb. I guarantee you. <laughs> we uh, we hooked him up with a job here in like two weeks, three weeks. That yep. he will hold phones for us. I think for as long he's as he's going, he's going big time. You know, you, you he's leaving you, us. You can tell him that they do make tripods for this stuff. Yeah, well, him. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Gary. You got two arms. Listen, he, Jordan's about to leave us. You know this. Oh, well, where's he going? He's got himself a freelance gig coming up that we may or may not have hooked him up on, oh. and he's going to be a bigwig after this job. He well, never talks to us again. He'll never uh, come back. I think so. Uh -huh. He's filming for one of the biggest dogs in the game uh -huh. ever, and I think really one of the biggest, most re most recognizable names in whitetail hunting. Yeah. Yep. And entertaining. Oh, yeah. And entertaining. Sure. I'll, I'll tell you what, there's some pressure, you know, working for those guys. No if, no pressure, Jordan. You know. But there's some pressure. Yeah. Just keep holding those phones up. <laughs> I got it. Keep holding them phones, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I got two phones. <laughs> He's got two phones. One for, I don't know. One the for each of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, give me two bears. <laughs> All right, boys. <laughs> Turning point of the season. Let's kill some deer on the cold fronts. Have a Let's good time. Good luck to everybody. You good know luck. what to do. Go shoot your bow. We love you. Peace.